National Speedway in the Southern Hills, the Irish Hills of Southern Michigan, for today's running of the champion Spark Plug 400. It is a beautiful day with bright sunshine. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, along with Larry Newber, and this should be a dandy. Always good competition on the high banks of Michigan. To start with today, we've compiled some statistics for you. We've taken selected drivers and showed you the finishing positions on the so-called super, super speedways, those more than two miles in length, Daytona, Talladega, Pocono, and here at Michigan. Well, first of all, Bob, after Elliott's win in Daytona at the first part of the season, as we all looked ahead to the two races at Michigan, we figured that he would be well into the thick of the points battle. Well, he's second, but he's not quite as close as he wanted to be. It hasn't worked out as he wanted it to. Let's first of all look at the composite super, super speedway standings for the season. Look at the column for top ten. Dale Earnhardt is seven for seven. Elliott is only three for seven in the top ten. You can see that Buddy Baker and Ken Schrader have also done well. Now, let's go back in time to the Martinsville race, actually after the Martinsville race at the end of April. Dale Earnhardt had won six times, seven top fives. His lead was 157 points over Bill Elliott, who had only won once. But we were headed into the part of the season that most assume would be Bill Elliott's strong point. But it just hasn't worked out. The Earnhardt juggernaut has continued. He has won twice. Elliott has only won once in those super, super speedways. You can see that Earnhardt has now 13 top fives, and the lead has mushroomed up to 498 points. Now, the performance since Martinsville of just Earnhardt and Elliott. Earnhardt has averaged a sixth finish. He has finished every race. Bill Elliott has averaged a 17th, almost an 18th finish. He's had four DNFs, and in that time, he's had something that was basically unheard of two years ago, three engine failures. Bill and Dale aren't the only ones in this race. A couple of youngsters, Davey Allison and Alan Kowicki, start up front. Well, let's go to one of our two pit reporters for the afternoon. First, the editor of Stock Car Racing Magazine, Dick Berggren. Well, Bob, we've got a very unusual starting order here. Way back in 32nd starting position is Cale Yarbrough. Now, he's won more races than any other driver currently active in Winston Cup stock car racing at the Michigan track. He's won here eight times. And starting beside him is Buddy Baker. He's also won in Michigan. Well, they've got a lot of company back here with some other heavy hitters. Neil Bonnet is back here. Ricky Rudd is back here. Tim Richmond, and so is Jeff Bodine. Meanwhile, way up at the front of the pack, well, we've got a bunch of raw rookies. Brett Bodine is starting in fifth spot. This is only the second time he's ever been to Michigan. He's never won a Winston Cup race, but he's got some company because there are two other drivers in the front five who have also never won a Winston Cup race, Alan Kowicki and Kenny Schrader. On the pole, yet another rookie, Davey Allison. And there's quite a story on his car. And for that story, here's Jerry Punch. There's no denying what Davey Allison has accomplished this year and two wins and three poles and six top 10 finishes. But the saga is not of Allison, it's of the car. The car is named Battlestar. It should be called Battle Scar. The reason, well, the car was brand new at Rockingham and set on the pole. Then at Darlington, the car backed into the wall was engulfed in flame, had to be rebuilt from the star back. Then at Dover, Delaware, a week later, the, weeks later, the car wins. Then at Pocono, the car again in the wall in practice had to be rebuilt from here back. The crew said they should have put a zipper back here so they could just put a rear end on every time the car crashes. Then a week ago at Watkins Glen, the car was tumbled over upside down as the car holder rolled down the mountain. The car is beaten and battered. Numerous scratches and dings in the car. They said the car would not be fast here in Michigan, but indeed it is. Over 170.7 miles per hour, it's on the pole. Aerodynamics, well, maybe. They call it the golf ball effect. The more dimples, the faster it goes. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Those are some of the players in today's race. And how about this racetrack? Well, in 1981, there were 65 lead changes during the course of a 400-mile race. That should indicate the kind of competition we will be having here this afternoon. The Champion Spark Plug 400 is being brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Quaker State Motor Oil. New Quaker State with QSX. Keeps your engine cleaner to last longer. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Kodak BRG Film. Unsurpassed color and print film. The color of life. The 40 cars in today's race have been fired on pit road and are about to move out to begin this 400-miler here at Michigan.
road and onto the high banks of Michigan International Speedway. There is Davey Allison. He's the pole sitter, but had a few problems getting the car started, and he's going to have to catch up to his assigned starting position right behind the pace car. So again, 40 cars and drivers are getting set to go, and here is a lineup for today's champion Spark Plug 400. On the pole, with a speed of 170.705 miles an hour from Hueytown, Alabama, in the Haviland Ford, Davey Allison. Alongside will be Alan Kulicki from Concord, North Carolina, in the number 7, Zerat Dahlia Dodge Ford. Going in row number 2, from Dawsonville, Georgia, Bill Elliott in the number 9, Coors Spelling Ford. And alongside Ken Schrader from Seven, Missouri, in the Red Baron Frozen Pizza Ford, the fastest four qualifiers will in fourth. Now going to row number three, it's Brett Bodine in number one in the Bullseye Barbecue Sauce Chevrolet and alongside Benny Parsons in the Folgers Coffee Chevy. Row number four, Dale Daryl Waltrip in the Tide Chevrolet and alongside will be Dale Earnhardt in the Wrangler Chevrolet. Going to row number five, it's Terry Labonte in the Budweiser Chevrolet number 11 and Derek Cope in the number 19 Stoke Racing Ford. In the sixth row will be Richard Petty in the STP Pontiac, number 43, and Harry Gant in the Skull Bandit Chevrolet, number 33. In row number seven, it's Rick Wilson carrying one of our in-car cameras in the Kodak Film Oldsmobile, and then Lake Speed in the Wins Oldsmobile. Starting in row number eight, it's Morgan Shepard in the Quaker State Buick, and Bobby Hillen Jr. in the Miller American Buick. In the ninth row, Jim Sauter in the number 89 Evinrood Outboards Pontiac and Kyle Petty in the Sitco Ford. Going to row number 10, it's Bobby Allison and last week's winner, Rusty Wallace. Row number 11, Sterling Marlin and Jeff Bodine. Starting in row number 12, Bill Parsons and Rodney Combs. The 13th row, Tim Richmond and Ken Reagan. In the 14th row, Ricky Rudd and Michael Waltrip. Row number 15 consists of Dave Marcus and Neil Bonnet. Buddy Baker and Cale Yarborough make up row number 16, while Buddy Arrington and Dave Zipko are in the 17th row. Row number 18, it's J.D. McDuffie and Jimmy Means. In the 19th row, Dale Jarrett and Charlie Rudolph. And in the 20th row, it's Bobby Waywack and Greg Sachs. So those are the 40 starters that are now going through the tri-oval, getting set to start this race. And there is a look at Cale Yarborough, and he also carries one of our in-car cameras today. As we look at Yarborough, Bob, he is one of those people starting behind 20th position, start position. And what's so significant about that, Winston Cup competitive, Winston Cup racing has become so competitive, no one has ever started from worse than 10th at MIS and won. Jeff Bodine, Bill Parsons, Tim Richmond, Ricky Rudd, Michael Waltrip, Neil Bonnet, Buddy Baker, Cale Yarbrough, all those people starting behind 20th start position. And Rick Wilson will carry our other in-car camera. He's getting the goggles adjusted, getting set to go. He starts from row number 13. And alongside him will be Lake Speed and just ahead of him, the STP Pontiac, driven by Richard Petty. Some surprises, yes, in the top 10, top 20 in qualifying, but the racing has become so close, particularly in 1986 and 1987, that you can't call Kawicki a big surprise up front. You certainly can't call Benny Parsons surprising on the performance of Gary Cope the last time here at MIS. That, too, is not a surprise. They are all up into the top ten. Derry Cope, of course, was the second quickest qualifier in the race earlier this year here at Michigan. Today, he qualifies for the tenth position with a 168.634 mile an hour lap. Well, the field is in the northern banking of Michigan International Speedway, coming about to come through the trioval and hopefully to receive the green flag from NASCAR official starter Carol Kinder. Here comes the field, beginning to pick up speed just a little bit. It's Davey Allison and Alan Kowicki as the crowd rises to its feet, begins to cheer, and the green flag is out. Here we go, 400 miles. The champion spark plug 400 is underway. Darrell Waltrip to the inside, trying to make a move on Dale Earnhardt already as the front row stays pretty much together. Now coming out of turn number two and down the back stretch, it's Davey Allison that's going to grab the lead away from Alan Kowicki. They stream down the back stretch. That's Ken Schrader and Bill Elliott side by side as they head to turn number three. Elliott to the low side and Schrader high, but Schrader pull, pulls back around Bill Elliott about a, by about a half a car length and maintains that third position. Lap one about to be complete. <laughs> It 
is Davy Allison, followed by Alan Kowicki, and then Schrader and Elliott battling. Wins most often here at MIS have come from first and fourth. Look at the entire field. We've completed two miles, and they're still two and three, almost even four abreast. The pole center, of course, Davy Allison. The fourth starter, Ken Schrader. And I will also tell you that yesterday afternoon, Saturday in the final practice session, the man visibly having the best day is Darrell Walter. And look at the field staying bunched together as we're about to complete lap number two. The best race there involves Dale Earnhardt and Bill Elliott as they go side by side now for that fourth spot. Schrader has grabbed third, but look at the four abreast racing through the trioval. Jerry Cope has thrust himself. He's on the right hand side of your screen, the low side of the racetrack. Look at Jerry Cope in that blue and white Ford number 19, the West Coast racer. Is he for real? The early performance would suggest yes as Waltrip gets out of the groove and leads, loses two, three positions. Now the real battle of, involves Brett Bodine in that red number one. Dale Earnhardt, that's Richard Petty in 43, and of course Terry Labonte in number 11. They're really slugging it out here in the opening laps. Two miles around the trioval here at the Michigan International Speedway. The drivers will tell you that when you slam into turn number one, this is a relatively smooth arc coming out of four, but when you dive through the trial, we'll go toward turn number one. Right now, it doesn't look like it on your screen, but it's a hard left-hander. You have to turn the car sharply, hit the apex in the bottom side of the number one turn, let the car drift up into the middle of the racetrack. Then you maneuver your car through number two properly, and hopefully you set up for the long backstretch where if you've got any extra horsepower, you can do some passing. Rick Wilson is right in the middle of this battle for positions as he's behind Morgan Shepard in the Quaker State car. They set their machines into turn number three. That's Richard Petty on the high side of the racetrack. The last lap, as you can see, turned at 168.224 miles an hour, only about two miles an hour slower than what they qualified at. There you can see Benny Parsons and Rusty Wallace, last week's winner, moving around as they're now in turn number one. Rusty Wallace is one of the multitude of crews that thought, hey, we're going to qualify in the top ten here at Michigan International easily. He was 20th quick as he is right in the middle of this backstretch freight train here in the early stages at MIS. Drafting very important at this racetrack. If you get in the draft and stay with somebody, you can hold on to your spot. But if you should break the draft, you're going to find yourself dropping back drastically. Up front, it is a good battle for the lead developing now as Alan Kowicki and Davey Allison uh, go at it, but also some great racing in the back of the pack. There are the leaders. The Fords were strong here all weekend long. They occupied the first four positions in qualifying, and they remain up top. There is Alan Kowicki running in second in that Xerox number seven, and Alan Kowicki is having one of his better runs of the 1987 season. And I don't refer to this race alone. The last month has been a good one for a young racer from Wisconsin. Strong performance on the super, super speedway at Pocono not too long ago. And it looks like that Allen is sneaking right up on Davey in the corners. When they get on the back stretch, they'll be able to stretch it out just a little bit. But nevertheless, Kowicki able to stay right up on the rear bumper of Davey Allison. It's still Ken Schrader running third, followed by Bill Elliott, and then Derry Cope, who is in fifth. There's some two abreast racing. That's Fred Bodine, Terry Labonte, Dale Earnhardt, and Richard Petty. And that's sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. As the eighth position is about to be uh, contested between Petty and Earnhardt, and Petty grabs that spot. A strong showing for that number one bullseye barbecue car of Haas Ellington with Brett Bodine behind the wheel. Brent raced. Brett raced last night down in Rougemont, North Carolina in a Bush Grand National race and crashed heavily. He's driving sore today here at MIS. But he qualified in the top ten and he remains there. The field streaming across the start finish line and completing lap number seven of 200. And you can see that the field is staying very close together, well bunched in the draft. And there is Dale Earnhardt now moving to the inside of Brett Bodine as they come off corner number two, battling for that seventh position. Earnhardt to the inside and Brett Bodine outside, but Brett has the advantage as they go down the straightaway. Now Earnhardt begins to make the move, pulls alongside, slingshots by, going into turn number three, and Earnhardt moves up to seventh. 
So we're in the opening stages of the champion spark plug 400 from Michigan International Speedway. Daly Allison leads Alan Kowicki, Schrader, and Elliott. We have completed 10 laps in the champion spark plug 400. That's Davey Allison leading. Ken Schrader moves around Alan Kowicki and takes second. Back in fourth is Bill Elliott. And in the uh, fifth position now is Terry Labonte as uh, Derek Cope, who was right up there with the uh, lead draft, has fallen back and is now in uh, sixth spot. He's in sixth, but side by side with uh, Dale Earnhardt. There is Labonte who just got around both Earnhardt and Derek Cope. And Labonte is the man who has moved up on the top five. You can see him there on the left-hand side of your screen. screen. He is the uh, fourth white car. You can see Terry Labonte showing some uh, flashes that he would like to do some passing. Going to the inside of Bill Elliott, coming to the trioval. They're side by side, heading for turn number one. Labonte inside and Bill Elliott to the outside of the racetrack. Alan Kowicki right in front. There are five cars in the lead draft, and Dale Earnhardt is catching up in sixth as he has disposed of Derek Cope. And now Dale Earnhardt is very close to joining the lead draft in that sixth position. We have had our spotters indicate to us that they're seeing some tire smoke from the Dale Earnhardt car. And Larry, I think it's just simply because he is driving that car to its fullest. Yeah, I think so, Bob. He has really been thrashing on it. Uh, Earnhardt didn't have the best of starts, but perhaps he was biding his time for just a couple of laps. But since everybody strung out, he turned his machine loose, and Earnhardt has been moving up. And as we watch Earnhardt and Labonte, they are the two moving up. We also make mention last week, winner Rusty Wallace has moved to ninth from 20th, and we understand a comment from Pitts. Jerry? You never have to worry about the driving ability of Dale Earnhardt. No question about that, as he can uh, take a bad handling car or a good handling car to the front. And right now, as you can see, he has joined the lead draft and uh, falls into sixth position. There is Tim Richmond right behind Cale Yarborough. As we have a view out the uh, rear glass of the Hardy's Oldsmobile driven by Cale Yarborough. And that is 19th and 20th position. Cale in 19th and Tim Richmond in 20th. Richmond, a very poor qualifying performance. At 167.6, began this race 25th. Now he moves to the inside of Cale and tries to pick up the spot. You can see they had just disposed of uh, Bobby Hillen Jr. By the way, back to that comment about driving a race car loose. Racers will tell you that nothing's wrong unless you look out the right-hand side and you see other race cars. Then you know that something is awry. Continue to watch Tim Richmond running right alongside of Cale Yarborough there in the Northern Banking, about to complete another lap and some very close competition here as they look like they may have touched slightly coming off of turn number four. And look at the lead pack and look at Dale Earnhardt go high and uh, about to move into third position. Three wide in turn number two coming off the banking and down the flat back stretch. That's Allison still leading. And it is Ken Schrader second, then Earnhardt, then Kowicki, then Labonte. One of the traits of the Michigan International Speedway, particularly for Winston Cup stock cars since they built this racetrack back in the late 1960s, is the ability of these drivers to go two, three, sometimes even four abreast all the way around the racetrack. It's very wide as super speedways go. The banking is also constant. There is no saucer effect here at the Michigan International Speedway. The banking seems to be consistent as we look at the tops or the average speed so far, 164 miles an hour. The banking is as consistent down on the bottom as it is up near the wall, and that's why the cars can do that. And this also has been a track that has, in the past, not led to a lot of attrition. And you'll remember a few years ago, I think three years ago, we ran a complete race without a caution. So it's also a track that has been very safe throughout the years, but boy, it's one that leads to some great competition. Now we zoom in on the top three as Earnhardt is about to take second position, and Dale is making sure everybody is aware that he is there although he started eight the car apparently is now beginning to work very well for him and he slides to the inside of ken schrader they're side by side into turn number one remember dale earnhardt won the previous race here at michigan earlier this year 
and now Earnhardt goes in to second as you can see some tire smoke coming off the left rear of the Ken Schrader frozen uh, Baron's frozen pizza special. It's hard to say which one it came off of specifically, but I don't think it makes any difference because they're out there racing. One word about Earnhardt and all of his wins this year, I realize we are just embarking basically on the second half of the season. Earnhardt has not won yet twice at one single racetrack. He could do so here at Michigan International Day with those eight wins. None has come, uh, at a, at none has doubled up, at, that is, at one single speed. Run. So there is Davey Allison leading Dale Earnhardt. And we asked him a little bit uh, earlier in the weekend about uh, things that bother him. You always seem calm, relaxed. Does anything upset you on the racetrack? Running second. And that tells the story right there. Nothing else need be said. Earnhardt now in second position, but we'll see his tactic here as he has really closed in on the leader, Davey Allison. And look at this competition midway through the pack as again they continue to run three and four abreast through the corners. Richard Petty is in that group. Saw Tim Richmond, Neil Bonnet, Jeff Bodine. There is the pack from inside Rick Wilson's car as they look low to a Jeff Bodine. Wilson, Bodine, Tim Richmond, also Jim Sauter involved in this uh, fight for position. 4Y going into turn number one. But that's the number 44 car of Sterling Marlin also. Lake, there. Lake Speed, Kyle Petty. I think I saw uh, Michael Waltrip just to the rear of that pack. There is a picture of Lake Speed. Speaking of Lake Speed, as he slips up and goes behind Sterling Marlin, and Lake Speed wrestles his wheel as uh, he falls into line down the backstretch. Hardy's race cam gave giving us some uh, great shots as he and Lake Speed and the number 83 wins Kmart machine are going at it for position. See the movement of the wheel that the driver uh, has to make as he goes around these high banks. Now onto the trioval where the banking isn't quite as steep. And of course the backstretch here in Michigan is almost completely flat. One of the amazing aspects of these early laps here at MIS, Bob, is that the field is not in jeopardy. Not a single car is in jeopardy of being lapped. Everybody has continued to run at high speed. The qualifying difference was only about three seconds. They are all running much closer than that now. Let's just let you ride around the race course with Cale Yarborough. And Terry Labonte has moved to third. Now Labonte on the high side. Let's see if he can take over that second position. An outstanding performance in the early going for Dale Earnhardt, who started this race in eighth, caught up with the lead draft, and now has positioned himself at the front. Earlier in the season, Dale Earnhardt, when he was in the midst of racking up all those wins in March, April, May, and the early part of June, at one point, he had reached the percentile of 65 for the percentage of laps that he had led. Not running the lead lap or not running the top five. Take another look at this pass on Dale. It was just a classic MIS pass. He kept the momentum up as he went around turn number one, number two, which sets you up for the backstretch. The backstretch is normally where you can get most of your work done, and Dale did it on Davey. Now Labonte is trying to do the same thing. He'll follow Davey through the D-shaped front stretch here turn a good turn number one turn number two and if he has kept the momentum up going through and cross the start finish line perhaps he can pass Davy in number two but if he gets one and two good the pass will come at the end of the backstretch but Davy that time seemed to have the edge going through one and two well a while ago there were five cars in the lead draft now there are seven cars in the lead draft as Richard Petty and uh, Rusty Wallace have cut up and there is trouble in the Cale Yarborough car he has dropped low on the racetrack and smoke is pouring from that machine it looks like another bad race for Cale Yarborough. Cale Yarborough who went to his own team for 1987 he told us yesterday as he has told everyone yeah I knew it'd be difficult but I really had no idea it would be quite this difficult to pull off but 
He has had a season that has been nothing but frustration. Cale Yarborough dropping low on the racetrack. He's able to come into the pit area without uh, stalling on the track. Will, of course, have no yellow flag. And I believe Cale is going to make it, although he is running very slowly on the bottom side of the racetrack now in the uh, third and fourth turns. So Cale Yarborough drops out of another race. Last week he was fifth at Talladega, but uh, is 25th in the point standings going in. Of course, he doesn't compete on the entire circuit. But nevertheless, it has not been a good year for Cale Yarborough, and the misfortunes continue. We've completed 23 laps at the Champion Spark Plug 400. At Michigan International Speedway in the Champion Spark Plug 400. Look at the interval that Dale Earnhardt has opened up on the rest of the field. That's the interval there between first and second position. Dale passed Davy Allison a couple of laps ago, and he's now really stretching it out. That's Allison still running second, followed by Terry Labonte, Ken Schrader, Richard Petty making a race out of it with Bill Elliott, and behind Elliott is Alan Kowicki and the number 27 of Rusty Wallace. Then comes Shepard, Benny Parsons, Derry Kopisil up there. Buddy Baker has moved up nicely, as has Jeff Bodine. Next comes Darrell Waltrip and then Tim Richmond. That's a kind of a quick overview of the top 15, give you an idea how some of your favorites are doing. Baker has moved up nicely, as has Bodine. Look at the old KG veteran, though, Richard Petty, hanging right in there with the youngsters. There's Alan Kowicki beside him as Richard continues to run that high line that he likes on these kinds of racetracks, and that's Rusty Wallace right behind him, but a good performance in the early going by the king, Richard Petty. A couple of Pontiacs, Petty and Wallace, they hooked up. That's how they caught that pack of Fords. Well, let's go to Dick Bergeron. And here's the story. Kenny Schrader has lost the ability to talk to his crew. Now, they can hear him, but Schrader can't hear them. That is a critical problem down here because it's so important to know when to come in for a pit stop. Jerry Punch, what's going on down at your end of the pitch? Well, we're in the Hardy's pits of Kale Yarbrough. This is his crew chief, Cliff Champion. And Cliff, a short afternoon, what happened to you? Well, I don't really know, Jerry. Uh, yeah, the car seemed to be handling fairly well. Kale said that the chassis was okay. He was just you know, kind of stuck in traffic right now, trying to work his way up. And then all of a sudden he came on the radio and it blowed up. Yeah, what we all hate to hear, but it may be something minor, but it is here. Well, blown up, that sums it up indeed. The Hardy's Oldsmobile has made its way to the garage area. And there you can see the leaders. It is still, still Dale Earnhardt in front. Bob, in the last eight races, uh, Kale has entered four. He has finished two of them, finishing the fourth and the fifth. He's had an engine problem and brake failure the other two times. There's Bill Elliott leading this pack of cars into the northern high banking with Kowicki, Petty, Rusty Wallace, and others trailing. Now, every once in a while, if you are a keen observer of motor racing, you'll see what appears to be these cars sliding, the tail ends coming out. They are understeering, as some of the racers are wanting to say. Yep, your eyes are not deceiving you. That is exactly what is happening. You can really hang it out here at Michigan, particularly on a day like today or yesterday, as we go down pit side and see Dale Jarrett, another one of the competitors last night at Rougemont, North Carolina, making a premature pit stop. You can really hang it out here at Michigan. Yesterday, it got very hot during qualifying. It was almost like an oiled track, and we expect the same scenario to unfold here this afternoon. We're continuing to watch this uh, race for a second. Now focusing in on Schrader, Wallace, Petty, and Alan Kowicki. Oh. And some sideways there. Wallace and Wallace Schrader. Way out of shape in the fourth turn. Gathered it in, however. Alan Kowicki begins to drop back just a little bit. He was the second start, the second place starter and ran second for a while, but is now battling for the sixth spot with Ken Schrader. Both uh, Schrader and Kowicki, of course, or rather, excuse me, uh, Schrader and uh, Wallace from the Show Me State. And, uh, they were both uh, showing me a little bit of slide that time around. Let's talk about pit stops, Larry. When, what might we expect the first set? Pretty simple here. It's a two-mile racetrack, 50 laps is 100 miles. That is the normal distance that we are accustomed to seeing uh, Winston Cup cars go. That is the barometer, 50 laps. 
And on the back side, the window that is critical near the end of the race would be lap 150. Those who pit before that are probably going to have to stop one extra time. If anybody can stretch it past 150, they should be able to go the distance. Last lap, this was the action into turn number four as Rusty Wallace is the so-called meat in the sandwich and gets a little bit out of shape. A couple of things going on. First of all, Richard Petty was maintaining his line because Rusty and Kenny found themselves three abreast. That lane got very narrow, so it was one, time, one situation where Petty was maintaining his line. The other one was the draft was disrupting a little bit what's going on with the cars behind. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh here as the leader continues to be Dale Earnhardt. And there is Davy Allison running second, but then it's Labonte, Wallace, Petty, Bill Elliott, and Alan Kowicki. Last week at Watkins Glen, those of you who, that were with us saw wholesale pit stops and Staying on the lead lap was of extreme importance, but it was not a disadvantage to slip significantly behind. Here at MIS, it might be a big disadvantage. The average speed is now 163, almost 164 miles an hour. Bob told you earlier, it's very common to have few caution flags, perhaps as few as three or four. And if you're not careful here at MIS, once you get into a period of the race like this where you've been green for so long, you might find yourself getting lapped and ending whatever chances you might have to win this race. So the low number of yellow flags can really play a role in the outcome here at Michigan. Dale Earnhardt has just absolutely taken off and is leaving everyone in his wake. He's up to a three and a half second lead now over Davy Allison and the others. And here is that uh, second place car driven by Allison. They move to the high side and pass Dave Simcoe, one of the uh, slower cars on the racetrack. But Terry Labonte and Rusty Wallace are hooked up in a draft with Davy Allison as they go into the backstretch. Simcoe is from nearby Clarkston, Michigan, one of the home staters, almost the uh, home area drivers that competing here at MIS. We have a car spinning down the back stretch and picking up a whole bunch of dust. That is the 04 car of Charlie Rudolph. The Sunoco Chevrolet has spun off the racetrack to the inside. Doesn't appear as if he has hit anything. He's managed to keep it away from the inside uh, guardrail. However, Charlie is off course, has the car running, however, and is going to be pushing it, or rather driving it back onto the racetrack. But nevertheless, the first yellow of the afternoon comes out as Dale Earnhardt will charge toward the finish line and uh, maintain that first position. Rudolph, of course, is a man who has had most of his experience in the last five years running the Modifieds out east. Landed a, a nice sponsorship with the Sunoco people. This is the same Sunoco that used to uh, adorn Roger Penske cars. And pit stops are being made as Earnhardt comes in. We're on lap number 34, so it's a little early, but nevertheless, every driver, or at least every leader, is taking advantage of this yellow flag situation to get some new tires and some fuel down to the pit area. Dale Earnhardt of the Wrangler Chevrolet in for right side tires. Probably these crews will change all four tires under the first caution of the afternoon. And you see Earnhardt on the top and Allison on the bottom as we see the lead car now getting four tires. The Allison crew moving around to the left side of the car. Earnhardt's crew almost finished with their finish on the car down the way. A little over 14 and a half seconds. His car is gone. Allison still on the jack getting his left side tires. Remember their crewman, their jackman, Larry Ift, injured last week. And team manager Robert Yates has down pit road. Well, a much slower pit stop for Davey Allison, but he and the others are moving back up to speed and going back out onto the race course. You can see that Rusty Wallace and Terry Labonte have beaten Davey Allison out of the pits for this restart. So we're under yellow because of a spin on the backstretch involving Charlie Rudolph. We'll be back with more of our live coverage from Michigan. The owner of this racetrack always attracts a tremendous crowd, especially when the Winston Cup cars are here, and that is the situation this afternoon. And I can guarantee you what I'm going to be doing tonight, Larry, is uh, I've been waiting on this uh, preseason game between the Bears and the Dolphins for a long time, and I know ESPN has. Can we <laughs> start a pool as to who Chicago's starting quarterback will be <laughs> each quarter and then for the first game of the real season? That's going to be interesting to see who emerges from that uh, apparent dog fight to come up as the signal caller for the Bears, a team which... Certainly, if everything falls together, everybody uh, is in agreement. They're still one of the stronger teams in the National Football League. It'll be live at 8 o'clock Eastern time tonight from Miami, the Dolphins, and the Chicago Bears. 
Well, this round of pit stops will really shuffle the standings. Everybody has come in. Uh, there was no pattern to people running up front, getting in first, getting out first. You're going to see a lot of changes when we give you the, the lineup as it now is. Well, Rusty Wallace had a good pit stop and is third in line behind the pace car. Let's see if we can reach Rusty by our in-car radio to see how things are going for him. Rusty, this is Larry Newber up in the ESPN booth. Do you have a reading on us? Yeah, I do. Go ahead, Larry. Well, things don't look quite as strong as they did for you last week at Watkins Glen, but do you feel like you're still very much in the hunt? Oh, yeah. You know, I think it's a lot to say for the team to come from 20th up to 3rd. Tony Pontiac's running real good. These guys up here, just I got my work cut out a little bit harder than I did last week. Now, did you make any changes on the car in this first uh, pit stop, or have you basically kept what you started the race out with? No, we kept what we started the race out with. The car's a little loose, but I think I can drive it just a little bit faster with the rear end hung out of tad. It doesn't seem to be hurting me. Rusty, yesterday during qualifying, the track got very slippery. Same conditions today? Yeah, it's got a little bit better, really. Uh, the times have slowed down to like 4380s and 4420s and stuff like that versus. 30 or versus 42 flat for qualifying so we've got more rubber in the track and I don't know if the wind's died down any it looks to be a more of a crosswind instead of a tailwind into turn three so uh, we're a little bit better off right now okay Rusty we're gonna keep our eyes peeled on you and watch you match wits with that uh, blue and yellow machine yeah I need to get up there and dice with them a little bit well uh, Jerry Punch is in the pit of Tim Richmond and Tim is still there what's the problem Jerry well, no problem exactly. They are changing the rear track bar in the Folgers Coffee Chevrolet. They came in a link up the first time and they changed the right side tires. They brought him back in and changed left side tires. And the rear track bar has a lot to do with the handling of the car. The Panhard bar, and certainly they try to loosen the car up the car too tight. The looser it gets, the faster it'll go. We summarize the pit stops that have just occurred now. There is Earnhardt who uh, came in as the leader and comes out as the leader. Richard Petty, however, is uh, already up to second. He went into the pits in fifth position and now is second behind the pace car. So he was really the one that gained the most and Davey Allison lost the most. He went from second to fifth and the pace car has pulled off the racetrack as the field begins to accelerate off of corner number four into the trioval and the green flag is waving. The racing resumes. Look at Rusty Wallace trying to split the difference and go between Richard Petty in another car to the bottom of the racetrack, and Rusty Wallace goes into second. And it has been a very good first 38 laps for Rusty Wallace. He started 20th in this event, but is already in second. He's, of course, coming off that outstanding and exciting win last weekend at Watkins Glen last Monday. Actually, we had it live for you. He came in and made a pit stop on the very last lap and still won the race. There is Allison trying to move up. Morgan Shepard, he too has had a strong day so far. There goes Davey to the outside of Morgan. You're in turn three, turn four now. That's Davey Allison right behind the green car of Morgan Shepard. Larry McReynolds and crew has been feeling a fast car for Morgan Shepard for the last month. They've been besieged with poor luck, but they are definitely one of the people who could pop up with a win any week now. And there is Bill Elliott back in the pack doing battle with uh, Buddy Baker. Also Neil Bonnet in there, but Baker and Elliott now almost getting together, and our in-car camera is right behind this. This is Rick Wilson's view of the uh, of the goings-on out there. You see Wilson swinging to the inside of Lake Speed as he goes on the back stretch. Speed holds his line going into number three. Closes the door on Rick Wilson from the camera, the high cameras that you see usually on your screen. It looks so easy. You get some of the idea when you go down inside the race car. You see how sudden the moves are. They're dicing back and forth. The wind currents have an effect. The driver moving the car back and forth, of course, with the steering wheel. He can do some of the steering with the throttle. Lots of activity going on out there. Very close to lake speed. Benny Parsons, the green holder of the 35 decaf car. And Rick Wilson moving to the outside. Picking up position. Now he's still right behind Sterling Marvin as they come into the trioval once again. Now Rick looking to the inside. That's Jeff Bodine ahead of Sterling Marlin, but. Rick Wilson falls into position going into turn number one. Now he begins to move alongside once again. 
as he gets the right side view of that Piedmont Oldsmobile driven by Sterling Marlin and Rick Wilson passes Sterling and that's Jeff Bodine again in the Levi Garrett car and they try to make a move on him as they go out of turn number two and down the back stretch this is how it looks from the outside that is Marlin on the high side of the racetrack and so is Benny Parsons as Rick Wilson is to the low side Pretty good battle there between Rick Wilson and Sterling Marlin. Keep in mind how fast you are here inside of the first 100 laps. Yeah, it's significant, but it's not critical. This track figures to change greatly between now and when lap number 200 completes itself here at MIS. And the team that has the ability to make the car quick in the final 50 laps is the team that's going to win this race. Yes, Bernard is superior now. Yes, he has been superior most of the season. Yes, they have been able to make their car go quick the last quarter of every race. While we continue to watch from the in-car, camera will tell you that Earnhardt leads, followed by Rusty Wallace, Richard Petty, Davey Allison, and Terry Lavati. We'll be right back. The Monte Carlo SS could be with us on this Sunday afternoon for Winston Cup stock car racing. We're live at Michigan International Speedway. I'm Bob Jenkins along with Larry Newber, Nick Bergeron, and Dr. Jerry Punch. The leader is Dale Earnhardt, but right behind him by just a few car lengths is Rusty Wallace. In third at this point is Richard Petty. And there is Dale's performance since Riverside. On the 21st of June, he's finished first, sixth, first, third, and eight. Bob, the amazing thing about Earnhardt's season is you could pick any skein of six races and see basically the same performance. They have been incredibly consistent from short track to super speedway to road course to mid-sized racetrack. They have had an unbelievable season. Bobby Allison and Buddy Baker are racing for ninth. It is Bobby Allison in ninth at this point and Buddy Baker right behind in the Oldsmobile. He told us as early as Friday and that Crisco Olds that he was feeling very good about this race. As soon as they unloaded off the trailer, the car did exactly what they had hoped it would do, maybe even a little more. He got caught in one of those time warps in qualifying. When he went out, the track conditions were absolutely horrendous, so he didn't qualify well. But he warned us on Friday, hey, we're going to have a good weekend, and right now, Buddy has given it a good ride. A couple of cars have dropped out of the race. Ricky Rudd has put his machine behind the wall, and Derek Cope, who ran so well in the first 10 laps or so, is also behind the wall. Three of Rust Racing here. It's Bill Elliott, Terry Labonte, and Morgan Shepard. Remember, Michigan International is recognized by many as Bill Elliott's racetrack. We are accustomed to seeing him run up front, not accustomed to seeing him fight for fifth. We're used to seeing him leading out here, but Bill Elliott is racing right now with Terry Labonte still looking, incredibly enough, for that first win of 1987. Bill Elliott is fifth, Terry Labonte is sixth, Morgan Shepard seventh, and Alan Kowicki is eighth. Now Morgan Shepard draws right alongside Terry Labonte as they complete one more lap. Morgan Shepard and the Kenny Bernstein-owned Buick, sponsored by Quaker State. And there is Alan Kowicki, who is watching all of this. Good side-by-side -side racing here in turn number two down the back stretch. The top 25 cars, yes, 25, are still very much in it. Darrell Waltrip is running between 20th and 25th right now. There goes Alan Kowicki down to the inside of Morgan Shepard. And Terry Labonte and Kowicki picks up two positions, maybe. Terry Labonte says, no, it's not going to be that easy. I got the momentum. I got the RPMs. I'm up here in the banks. Watch me go across the start-finish line through the trioval. Labonte holds on. Boy, the rear of that car got very close to the outside wall as the car came off of corner number four. But Terry Labonte is fighting desperately to stave off the challenge of Alan Kowicki. Still side by side in the southern banking of this racetrack. But now Kowicki pulls cleanly ahead and opens up about a car length. Let's see what happens to Terry Labonte. Labonte will go to the inside and move around just like Allen did on him last lap. Kowicki now on the high line. It's side by side, door handle to door handle racing. 
Shepard sneaks up right on the rear bumper of Alan Kowicki. Now Shepard dives down to the low side. As they cross the line, I believe that Shepard passed both of them just momentarily and now moves up on the racetrack and has post, uh, passed both Lamonti and Kowicki. Looks now, like that Morgan was just waiting for the right opportunity. The good race drivers, they'll go to school on something like that. If Morgan Shepard was paying attention, he knows what his car is likely to do today unless the car's conditions and its setting for the racetrack the 100 laps change dramatically he knows that he can draft around three and four and under most conditions he can slingshot by two competitors theoretically morgan could take the white flag in third and still win the race sixth seventh and eighth right here as dale earnhardt continues to set the pace Followed closely by Rusty Wallace back in just a moment. Once again, Dale Earnhardt is beginning to stretch out the lead just a little bit with about a second lead over Rusty Wallace. Richard Petty is third, Davey Allison fourth, and Bill Elliott fifth at the end of 53 circuits. Six through ten, Morgan Shepard, Terry Labonte, Alan Kowicki, Bobby Allison in ninth, and Buddy Baker in tenth. But I'll tell you, the guy that impressed me most here in the opening stages has been Richard Petty. He's having a good day. We've mentioned several times he's having one of his better seasons. The King is comfortably seated in the top three here at Michigan International. This should be the kind of racetrack that really suits him. This is a NASCAR speedway. He could probably drive this racetrack blindfolded if push came to shove. Richard Petty, in the wake of a good season, could have a good day. Of his 200 career wins, 55 have been on super speedways. His best finish this year so far has been a second that was on the high banks, however, a short track at Bristol, where we will be next Saturday night and Friday night for NASCAR racing. What's most important for Richard Bob right now is to pace himself, not the machine, himself. Fatigue should well be a factor. It may be a little more, a little less of a factor, depending on the individual drivers. But it's a hot day. We are going to go 400 miles. Petty has to make certain that he's got the win in his chest to come down the last 20 laps. Back in fourth and fifth, Davey Allison, our pole sitter, and Bill Elliott, who is going for his third consecutive win at this race. Now, Dale Earnhardt, of course, won the race here at Michigan earlier this year. But Bill Elliott has a streak of two going, looking for three in a row in this particular late summer event here at Michigan. By the way, Ricky Rudd, we told you he had uh, pulled his Ford behind the wall. He is back in the race after some repairs in the garage area. Kale Yarbrough is the all-time leading winning driver here at Michigan International with eight wins. Bill Elliott is second with five. Joey Knuckles in a conference with some other crew members as they're talking about their man, Davey Allison and what he is doing on the racetrack at the moment. Well, he's falling back just a little bit, but still very much in contention for this race, but he is not running in the lead draft at this point. You look down into the Davy Allison, Joy Knuckles pit. Think about pit stops, think about fuel mileage, going back into the pits. Joy Knuckles still in a consultation. Gary Nelson said this week, you know, I got all the credit when Robert Yates was with me for the great fuel mileage that we used to get. Well, Robert Yates is now with Davey Allison and Joy Knuckles, and look who's getting that really outstanding fuel mileage. Yeah, it's the car that Robert is preparing the motors for. Once again, we go back up front to check on the leaders. And it is Dale Earnhardt still out in front. He's the car to the far left. And then Rusty Wallace, you can see the interval between first and second and the interval between second and third, Richard Petty.
for sweet slaps completed out of 200 at the champion spark plug 400 at michigan international speedway there is the leader dale earnhardt as he speeds down the back stretch a little bit of a race summary here as we uh, have already completed a fourth of the race Dale Earnhardt has led 37 of the 59 laps, about a second advantage over Rusty. The average speed 148.57, slowed by only one caution. We've had three lead changes and three different car driver combinations that have led this event. 30 cars are on the lead lap. Well, it's a very warm and relatively humid day here in Michigan, and you know how warm it can get inside the cars as we continue to watch this scramble for the fourth position involving Davey Allison and Bill Elliott and now Elliott goes around Davey Allison down the back stretch that's the number 67 car of Buddy Arrington to the inside but Elliott has now moved up one spot passing Davey Allison we talked about the warm and humid day and how it affects the drivers well Dick Bergeron is down in the pit area today wearing a cool suit Dick how does it feel well, Bob, it's really nice. I wish I'd had this thing at Dover earlier in the year when it was 110 degrees on pit road, but I'll take it here. Thermocore has built something different by way of cool suits. Instead of using a bucket of ice, they use a container of Freon. I've got one right here in a little bag. I've also got an adjuster in here so I can turn it up and down. And, uh, I feel a little like the President of the United States, but there's my cool suit here, and there's Freon flowing through here, keeping me nice and cool, and I feel just great. I really do. I love this thing. Meanwhile, on pit road, we've got some interesting happenings. One of them is that Davey Allison's car, his crew says, is tightened up. That means he's understeering a bit in the turns. They say it's a result of the weather. Well, it's starting to overcast here a little bit, so that'll affect absolutely everybody. A while ago, I told you Ken Schrader had lost his radio. On a recent pit stop, they changed it. Schrader now has communications with his pits. All right, Dick, now how exactly does a car, the handling on the car, the understeering, go along with the fact that the weather conditions are changing. Well, Bob, weather really affects the way the car runs a great, great deal, particularly here at Michigan. Here at Michigan, when the cars go into the corner, there's a tendency for the back end to try to come out. When they're going through the corner, there's a tendency for them to push to understeer. So you've really got to be absolutely balanced. Now, as the sun comes out, it tends to accelerate the looseness of the car. As the clouds come in and it gets overcast or the temperature drops, it tends to accelerate the concept of pushing or understeering. So as the weather changes, each time the cars come in, the crews will make adjustments on them to try to compensate for the weather. Right now we're riding with Rick Wilson as right in front of him is the number 90 car of Ken Schrader. The Kodak race cam giving us some great shots. You can see there is a crack in Rick's windshield caused by the fact that he's just going so fast and the wind pushing against the windshield has caused a crack in it. Picking up on Dick Bergwin's conversation, also something as simple as clouds passing overhead can create those changing weather conditions to which he referred. It's not really a weather change condition as much as it is sometimes just cloud cover. Ken Schrader right alongside of Rick Wilson you can get an idea of exactly how fast these cars are going. Notice the grandstands and the poles holding the catch missing here, how quickly they go by at over 170 miles an hour down the back stretch. Wall lap passed. He is one lap down. Swinging the camera around now and going to the front view that Rick Wilson has. Buddy Arrington to the left. Rick passes him cleanly into turn two. Sixty-six laps completed here in Michigan at Pocono, where they're running a 500-mile IndyCar race at the end of 125 miles. Emerson Fittipaldi leads over Jeff Brabham, Michael Andretti, Mario, Rick Mears, Alan Zer, Roberto Guerrero, Pancho Carter, Danny Sullivan, and A.J. Foyt. Brett Bodine on 
on the racetrack in that bullseye barbecue sauce number one. An excellent qualifying performance. He started fifth. The Bush Grand National race last night in which Brent raced was won by Larry Pearson. Elton Sawyer was second. Jimmy Hensley was third. That was Pearson's fourth win of 1987. We might mention Brent Bodine, who did qualify fifth, running back in about 22nd or 23rd spot. There had been a report from the Bullseye Barbecue Pits that possibly an overheating problem on the car. We talked a minute ago with Sheldon Pittman. The crew chief said, no, the car's not overheating too much. It's about 210 degrees. One thing we do know for sure that Brent Bodine is indeed hurting. He was in severe pain this morning. He tried to climb in the race car. He mentioned he ran a Bush Grand National race last night on Orange County Speedway down in Roosevelt, North Carolina. His Bush car was totally destroyed. He was today. There was even some talk that he would uh, pass up this race if it rained last night and rained it out and they were going to run that Bush Grand National race today. There was talk that he and Dale Jarrett would withdraw from this one and race at Rougemont. Fortunately, however, that didn't happen and the race was held last night. The lead here at Michigan continues to be held by Dale Earnhardt with Rusty Wallace running second and Richard Petty third. Back with our live coverage right after these messages. Stay with us. booth tonight along with Mike Patrick and Dick Butkus as we present an NFL preseason game the Chicago Bears against the Miami Dolphins at 8 o'clock Eastern Time tonight live on ESPN and we are live at Michigan International Speedway as Dale Earnhardt continues to lead and now this side-by-side -side battle involving Terry Labonte and Alan Kowicki for seventh. And Bobby Allison got his nose right up there saying, hey, fellas, I know you guys are having a good time, but uh, I'm back here. Don't slip up. I'll slip through. Alan Kowicki started second, was second fastest qualifier, but is now in eighth as Terry Labonte runs seventh. There is Bobby Allison, who started way back in 19th position. Remember, no driver has ever won MIS from further back than 10th. Again, the most favored positions of winners here at MIS, first and fourth. Behind that group, Buddy Baker continues to run. We got a quick glimpse of Morgan Shepard. He's in sixth position as Bobby Allison goes down low and momentarily makes it three abreast. Kenny Schrader is still in it. I'm going 10th through 20th in no particular order, but this is the approximation. Rick Wilson, Neil Bonnet, Sterling Marlin, Jeff Bodine, Tim Richland, Benny Parsons, Dave Marcus. You can see Labonte's Michigan record four times in the top 10 in 17 starts. Lake Speed still on the lead lap. Jim Sauter, who qualified so well, driving the Evan Root number 89. The 55 car of Phil Parsons, Kyle Petty, Brett Bodine, Bobby Hillen Jr., and Michael Waltrip. Where's Darrell? He's next. 26. So Alan Kowicki in the Xerox Ford running eight at the moment. He's of course pretty much an independent trying to put some money together. Well you really have to stick to basics and really try to get the most out of the equipment that you have. You have to do the best you can with what you've got and try to work your way up into a better position. That's what we're doing right now. We're in the growing stages with uh, this team and you know, I'm really pleased with the kind of progress that we've made. Uh, a lot of people use money for an excuse, you know, but you only get to race one car and one engine at a time. So you can't always say, well, if I had 10 engines, I'd run better. Or if I had 10 cars, I'd run better. I just concentrate on doing the best with what I've got and, and not use that for an excuse. Alan Kowicki's father, by the way, Gerald, crew chief and engine builder for teams that won six USAC stock car championships with Norm Nelson and Roger McCluskey. Right now, Alan comes into this race 17th in the point standings. Again, his best finish was not too long ago in the second Pocono race of the year. He was runner-up to Dale Earnhardt in an exciting battle for the uh, lead and the finish as Dale passed him going uh, out of the tunnel turn and held on for the victory. Kowicki has a second place at MIS, ASA, September 1985. And you know, Bob, people like Mike Eddy, Bob Seneker, 
Mark Martin, for that matter, maybe some of the younger fellows who have come along, Tom Jones in recent years. Kowicki is living their dream. This must give them tremendous incentive that, geez, maybe we're next. Maybe if we can take the time and, and provide the dedication, maybe this could be us in the next couple of seasons. You can see Allen's best 87 finish in Winston Cup racing. That rousing second place at Pocono. He lost the lead in the win on the last lap going over the tunnel turn to Dale Earnhardt. Who else? Back up front, it is Dale, Dale Earnhardt with an advantage over Rusty Wallace. Dale is threatening to uh, run away with this race, although Rusty Wallace is certainly still within striking distance. 76 laps have been completed, about a two-second lead for Dale Earnhardt. Now ESPN and NASCAR with a track back. Track backs are brought to you by the Robert Bosch Corporation, makers of Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. We've all seen a car suddenly slow on the racetrack and come slowly down pit road. We presume the problem is ignition trouble. A crew member would dive in that right side window. Seconds later, the car would fire, and the car would be on its way down pit road. Well, that crew member will be changing from one amplifier ignition to another. You have to unplug one box and plug in another. Well, no longer is that the case. They have wired both boxes to a single switch. No more pit stop needed. The driver simply flips the switch on the racetrack, new ignition system, and he's on his way. Recently, Tim Richmond was leading a race. The ignition system failed. He reached up to flip the switch, didn't miss a beat, didn't lose a lead, and went on to win the race. From the beautiful Irish hills of southern Michigan, we are bringing you live coverage of the Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International Speedway. It's pit stop time once again. Bill Elliott has come in. Ken Schrader has already been in. Aren't these a little early? We're only on lap 81. They're a little early unless you're unhappy with the setup of the race car. Then you want to come in as early as you can, make those changes. You can see a crewman reaching into the back window of Bill Elliott's car, adjusting uh, the wedge probably on that machine. It's early unless you want to make a change. One thing this does set up, however, just about everybody's going to have to stop at least two more times. Here is Dale Earnhardt coming in for his routine stop. Let's go to the pits. Dale Earnhardt brings the Wrangler Chevrolet down pit road. Now, he made an early pit stop on lap 35 during that first caution flag. It has been 46 laps since his first pit stop. That's 92 miles here at the two-mile Michigan track. That's about as far as he wants to go on fuel, really. He don't want to push it. Remember last week at Watkins Glen, they ran out of fuel early at Watkins Glen, made that last second stop. Right side tire, fuel only, and the car down the way. Jerry, it was a 14.1 second pit stop, an excellent performance. Now Richard Petty is in for a stop. He was running in third when the pit stops began. Others making it there is Richard Petty squealing the tires and rolling back onto the racetrack. Others that are in include Michael Waldrop, Bobby Hillen, Buddy Baker, Lake Speed, and Brett Bodine. Petty gaining momentum in the STP Pontiac. There's Bobby Hillen Jr.'s Miller American Buick. Service completed on that car. He rolls back out onto the racetrack. And here is Rusty Wallace's crew preparing for his stop. He is the leader because he hasn't made a pit stop, and we expect it this time around as the crew has moved out into pit lane, making sure that Rusty knows where to stop. There is Wallace bringing the Kodiak Pontiac down off the banking and into pit road. Dick Bergren is there for Rusty's pit stop. Uh, here comes Rusty Wallace down pit road. We just saw Dale Earnhardt going by off the pace. Rusty Wallace in for a pit stop. This is a routine stop. Wallace almost certainly is going to do exactly what everybody else has done on pit road, and that's to change right side tires, take a full load of fuel, and get out as quickly as possible. Helen Kowicki has just come in. So too has Bobby Allison. Rusty Wallace with a Pontiac Pontiac, and there he goes. It's a 14 point. 0.5 second pit stop, so just a tick of the watch slower than Dale Earnhardt's, but Rusty goes back out there. Dick mentioned he saw Earnhardt go by off the pace. He just came 
through the trial, but you can see some tire marks on the side of Jeff Bodine's car there in the pits. Earnhardt appeared to be up to speed this time, so not certain what it is that perhaps was spied from the pit area. Davey Allison was leading, but now here he comes in for a pit stop, and so does Terry Labonte. And the only one now among the leaders that has not come in for a stop, Morgan Shepard, Jerry Punch. Well, Davey Allison brings the Havoline forward to a halt. Remember, their first pit stop was a little longer than normal. Some of the crew members were hurt in that crash last week by the car holder. Robert Yates is manning and jack. Terry Labonte also in. In the Budweiser Chevrolet. Right side tires. The Havoline forward down the way. Let's go to Nick Bergeron. Well, some of the cars have taken the left side tires, and that is just exactly what Labonte did. Now, one of the significant things about these pit stops is they will determine who is getting good fuel economy. Remember, last week, if you saw Watkins Glen, Labonte managed to go all the way around in the very tail end without running out of fuel. Waltrip is now in for fuel. Jerry, what's going on in the Waltrip pit? Well, left side tires for the Tide Chevrolet. Darrell Waltrip's crew, Jeff Hammond, and him finishing the left side. Jack, good pit stop for Walter, 14 and 4, 10 seconds. There goes Darrell back out onto the race course. The leader was Morgan Shepard, but he has come in now, and that means that everybody has made his second pit stop. And we now check the standings and find that Rusty Wallace is in the lead over Dale Earnhardt. Kyle Petty among the last to pit, but now the service on that Wolf Brothers Ford completed. Six laps into the champion Spark Plug 400. Rusty Wallace has grabbed the lead. Dale Earnhardt is second, and Richard Petty is third. So as far as the change of positions as a result of the pit stops, Petty stays in third, but first and second exchange positions. Rusty now has the lead with Dale Earnhardt running in second. And there is Rusty Wallace. Three cars went the greatest distance between pit stop rounds. They got 50 laps or 100 miles out of a load as we continue to watch Rusty Wallace. Those three cars, Darrell Waltrip, Morgan Shepard, and Phil Parsons. So the race now resumes. The race in the pit area has been completed. We move back to action on the racetrack, and we'll be right back. Dick Bergman and Jerry Punch back at Michigan International Speedway for the champion Spark Plug 400. It is a one-second lead that Rusty Wallace has over Dale Earnhardt. Now, the question is, is there a problem with the Earnhardt machine? Richard Childress could best tell us that. Here's Dr. Punch. Well, there was a problem. There may still be a problem with the Earnhardt car. Richard Childress, your car was awfully slow getting up to speed at that pit stop. What happened? The clutch was slipping when he left the pit. Uh, we don't know why, but the clutch just slipped, and it slipped for about two or three laps, but it seemed like it might be okay now. You guys grabbed a fire extinguisher and ran up to the wall like you were going to bring him back in. What were you going to do? We're going to try We're going to try to cool it down and, and put some free, you know, blow some fire extinguisher fluid on it, try to cool it down. Okay, well, possibly a problem with Dale Earnhardt. They said the car is running okay now, but you never know. Much slipping when he made this pit stop. Let's go to Nick Burton. I'm with Barry Dawson. He's crew chief for the current leader, Rusty Wallace. Barry, how are things going for you? Things are going very good. Uh, the guys on the crew did a good job. We beat Earnhardt out. The car's staying good. We haven't done any adjustments on the Kodiak Pontiac. Right now, we're right on schedule. No adjustments is a very good sign. Rusty Wallace, the leader, running very well. Well, one car not running well at all. In fact, going behind the wall is the Red Baron pizza machine of Ken Schrader. You can see the crew pushing it behind the wall, and it does not look good for Ken here at Michigan. We might also mention that Daryl Waltrip has gone a lap down in the Tide machine. But the lead being held at the moment by Rusty Wallace as Rusty looks for his second consecutive win on the Winston Cup Trail. Ken Schrader, by the way, everybody would be best to keep their ears open. There are lots of conversations going around about Ken Schrader in 1988. He may be on the verge of uh, making a significant announcement for next season. Here's the battle for fifth position. Right now, Davey Allison has it. However, Terry Labonte sneaks upon him in the third and fourth turns. Well, let's summarize now the most recent set of pit stops. And we'll see, first of all, if Terry 
is able to pass Davy. They come into the trioval and by just a fender, it is Labonte with a slight advantage as they cross the line. But now as they go into turn number two, or rather number one, Labonte has about a full car length on Davy Allison and watch Morgan Shepard. He has suddenly come out of nowhere to challenge Davy Allison. Bob, I missed two people on that list of car and driver combinations that were able to go 50 laps in the last pit stop. Labonte and Kyle Petty were two others. So keep that in mind as we get down past lap 150. And again, the pit stop summary. Earnhardt went in first, came out second. Wallace came in second and out first. So those two traded positions. Bill Elliott stayed in third. Richard Petty stayed in fourth. And Davey Allison fell back one position. He came into the pits in fifth position and comes out in sixth. And you can see that the pet the pit stops range from lap 81 to lap 85. Now we pick up once again on this three car scramble involving Terry Labonte, Allison, and Morgan Shepard. And there is Rick Wilson with our Kodak in-car camera as he is behind all of this. Rick is running eighth, and again, there is a very clear view of the broken windshield on the Rick Wilson car. appears to be catching Morgan Shepard, Davey Allison, and Terry Labonte. The long back stretch give the, gives the drivers a chance to take their hands off the wheels and adjust their goggles or perhaps relax for just a second or two before they go into the high banking once again. There is Dale Earnhardt on the high side of the racetrack as Daryl Waltrip is right behind Davey Allison, or rather uh, the leader, Rusty Wallace. Daryl is 23rd, a lap down, would like to pass Rusty Wallace and get that lap back. Daryl was being challenged about two laps ago by Dale Earnhardt. It looked like Earnhardt had enough momentum to get around, but Dale has not done so, and Daryl has pulled away. And as Bob mentioned, is right now breathing down Rusty Wallace's tailpipes. Darrell Waltrip struggling to stay on the lead lap. Well, Ken Schrader, as we saw a little bit earlier, his car behind the wall, and he is now down in the pit area. Well, he's, he's now the latest retiree here in the Champions Spark Plug 400. And Kenny, a short afternoon. What happened to you? Well, we don't know for sure. The little car is working awful good, but we kind of suspect something happened in the valve train. Uh, it's, it didn't really start skipping, but the engine started getting a little bit lazier after that last green flag stop. And, uh, you know, right there at the end, it just broke on us. It's locked up now. It was still running, but uh, it, it won't start now. Well, a hot engine, but you're also a hot commodity. Larry Newber has mentioned there may be three, four, even five car owners after you for next year. Have you made any decisions yet? Well, you know, we've, we've got a lot of races to go yet this year, so uh, we've talked to some people about next year, but we've, we're not firmed up yet. Uh, the Junior Don Levy people, uh, team with Red Bear and Frozen Pizza have been awful good to me, and, uh, you know, we're, we're talking, but uh, we're not firmed up yet. Well, Kenny Schrader out of it here, and Dale Earnhardt closing in on Rusty Wallace. Let's go back upstairs. Indeed he is. Between Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt is Daryl Waltrip, but Dale unquestionably is closing in on the leader, Rusty Wallace. Now remember, Dale Earnhardt may have a clutch problem that would affect him coming in and out of the pits for his stops, but once he gets back up to speed, things are okay. Earnhardt. Now second, Elliott third, Richard Petty fourth, Davey Allison is fifth. Just past the halfway point in the champion spark plug 400, Rusty Wallace is the leader and Dale Earnhardt is second. Now the car right behind Rusty Wallace is Daryl Waldrop. However, he is a lap down to the leaders. Now our Napa mid-race recap. Wallace led at the halfway point and had led 16 of the 100 laps and his advantage on Dale Earnhardt was just one second. 22 cars are on the lead lap. We have had five different leaders and seven lead changes. Only one caution period for a total of four laps. That was when Charlie Rudolph spun off the backstretch 
but continued in the race. Out of competition, Cale Yarborough was the first to drop out, then Derek Cope, Dale Jarrett, Dave Marcus, and Jimmy Means. Also out, Charlie Rudolph, and the most recent to retire was Ken Schrader. So that's where we are at the halfway point, and at the moment, Dale Earnhardt is lying just behind the leader, Rusty Wallace. By the way, the average speed at the halfway point was 154.872 miles an hour. Driver changes, Bob. Remember last year at this time, all kinds of rumors, plus all types of substantiations as to people leaving their current teams and going on to somewhere else looking for greener pastures. Earnhardt is finally getting underneath Daryl Waltrip. Remember that Daryl runs one lap down, and Daryl's been trying to get around the leader, that white car there, Rusty Wallace, the first white car. But now Daryl Waltrip goes a lap down to Dale Earnhardt in addition to Rusty Wallace and Bobby Hill and Jr., of course, in the bottom. Getting back to the driver change story, very little conversation, certainly on the surface, so far this year for driver changes for next year. It appears as though the majority of teams, unlike in car any car racing, they're going to stand pat for 1988. There are some question marks, but by and large, the, uh, some of the drivers have indeed decided to stay where they are for 1988. Now look at Dale Earnhardt. He's right on the back bumper of Rusty Wallace and may be making a bid for the lead. They go into turn number one, and Earnhardt is looking to the inside. Dr. Jerry Punch in the pit area. Well, as you can probably tell, Dale Earnhardt's clutch is doing real well right now. What they surmised may have happened is just may have heated the clutch up as he was exiting pit road on the pit stop. The clutch was slipping a little bit as he went on the racetrack, but it's behaving quite nicely right now as he's making a move toward the front. Dale Earnhardt's car running well on the track, but they are worried here. He makes his next pit stop in about 15 That is indeed going to be the time when we see if indeed the clutch is going to give him a problem when he comes in for his next stop. But as Jerry indicated, that will be in about 15 to 20 laps from right now. Should be longer, Bob. There is Earnhardt, now within just a very few car lengths of last week's winner at Watkins Glen, Rusty Wallace, who leads here today. the race record in terms of average speed. Right now it's 154.8 and the record is 153.8. They're about a mile an hour ahead of the 400 mile record here at Michigan. There is the man who is on the move. It is Bill Elliott. He is in third at the moment and closing in on second place Dale Earnhardt. That's of course Daryl Waltrip right ahead of Bill but Daryl is a lap down. It seems like the longer this green flag segment lasts, the more superior Elliott becomes to everybody else. Difficult to tell whether or not that car is running the same speed that it was when it first came out of the pits, or has everybody else slowed down, or is Bill going faster? Or whatever, his relative speed to everyone has changed significantly in the last five laps. Michael Waltrip now right ahead of the leader as he is in 21st position. There goes Rusty Wallace by Michael Waltrip, and now there are 20 cars on the lead lap. Look at Elliott down on the low side of the racetrack, coming off the corner. Oh, and Michael bumps the wall, but saved it. Earnhardt, meanwhile, to the inside, goes around Michael. Here comes Darrell Waltrip. And now Bill Elliott makes a move on the bottom side of the racetrack. Michael Waltrip just brushing the wall, coming out of turn number two as he, I believe, tried to just put a, a sportsman-like move on and move high on the racetrack so that Dale Earnhardt and Bill Elliott and Darrell Waltrip could go by. Poor guy is just trying to do the right thing, <laughs> but he handled it well. When he got up there against the fence, he just barely brushed it. He might not even have hit it, as a matter of fact. There's a lot of loose dirt right up there along the wall. Obviously, you can run 
couple inches off of him, but you can't run a couple of tenths off, and that's where Michael is. All-time sponsorship on that Michael Waltrip car now. It's the All-Pro Auto Parts Chevrolet. Darrell Waltrip hanging tough. He sees Elliott moving up in the rearview mirrors. He's looking out the front window, continues to see Earnhardt and Wallace, and Wallace is trying to hold back Earnhardt, and Darrell's hanging in there. Bill Elliott down low on the racetrack going into turn number one. Now disposing of Darrell Waltrip. Can this be the return of the Bill Elliott, Ernie Elliott wrench team with uh, brother Dan also helping out in the pits? Two years ago when we saw Bill Elliott run the top side of the racetrack, the middle, down in the bottom, sometimes on the apron. Everybody felt that chassis and handling was the superiority they had in 1985. Fuel mileage could also be a factor for them today. They went less laps than most of the other leaders on the last stop. All right, let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch with an update on the weather conditions this afternoon. Well, not only is it hot on the racetrack, it's pretty warm here in the pits. You know, they were expecting to get to be 92 to 94 degrees here at Michigan today with humidity about 70 percent. Well, it must be at least 100 degrees here in the pits. A lot of the crew members are drinking a lot of fluids, and we have a couple of towels here courtesy of the Wrangler crew, and we're trying to keep dry. We've gotten wet a few times, but we're drying off right now. One guy who's pretty cool all the way around is my colleague Dick Berger. Dick? It feels great, too, Jerry. It really does. I've just been through one container of Freon. I'm on my second Freon container now. And so far, so good. Everything is working just fine. We're winding up for a great finish here at Michigan. Boy, Dick, we're going to have to reduce your paycheck here this weekend. You're spending time in the hammock and with the sunglasses on. And I just want you guys down there to know that Larry and I are very comfortable in an air-conditioned booth and uh, watching from high above Michigan International. We're also watching a great battle for second position as Bill Elliott is set to challenge Dale Earnhardt. Rusty Wallace continues to hang on by a thread to the lead. But behind him are Dale Earnhardt and Bill Elliott. Moving around the number 70 car, J.D. McDuffie. The three of them have outdistanced themselves from the rest of the field. The man still very much in it, by the way, is Richard Petty. He's maybe three, four seconds behind, but Petty is running in fourth position. Terry Labonte is fifth, and Morgan Shepard is in sixth. Seventh is Davey Allison. Eighth is the number four car of Rick Wilson. Ninth is Tim Richmond, and tenth is Bobby Allison. 116 of 200 laps completed. The lead is held by Rusty Wallace. Moving into second position now, Bill Elliott, and third is Dale Earnhardt, and this is how Bill took second. You can see Elliott on the inside of Dale as they go through turns one and two down the back switch. Bill trying to draft by Dale as they go down that long, flat back straightaway. Then they go into number three and four. They both got a little squirrely as they went through that turn, but they survived. No contact between the two of them. And Bill Elliott moved past Dale Earnhardt to second. And during that time when they were going at it for second, it allowed the leader, Rusty Wallace, to pull away just a little bit. But now, as you can see rapidly, Bill Elliott is closing in on the leader. Rusty Wallace. So we're having a battle here among a Pontiac, a Ford, and a Chevy, the top three positions. The Fords definitely had the advantage going in. Rusty gets very close to Lake Speed as he tries to thread the needle between Lake Speed and Harry again on the inside. Harry, by the way, having yet another miserable day. There were 10 Fords in today's starting lineup of 40 cars. The first four qualifiers were Fords. There were 16 Chevys, so they outnumbered the Fords. Six Oldsmobiles, just three Buicks, the Morgan Shepard, Bobby Young Jr., Bobby Allison cars, and five Pontiacs, Petty, Sauter, Rusty Wallace, J.D. McDuffie, and Greg Sachs. So the Pontiacs, considering there were only five of them, two of them running in the first four, are doing quite nicely, thank you. And with leg speed going a lap down, we now have 19 cars on the lead lap. The last car on the lead lap is Sterling Marlin. He's running in 19th position. Back inside the Rick Wilson Kodak sponsored car. Rick is seventh, and ahead of him is Morgan Shepard. And I believe that's Greg Sachs on the outside there that is being lapped. 
J.D. McGuffey goes by on the inside, going down one more lap. You know, if there are any people in the top ten that might be biding their time, I suggest it would be Richard Petty and that Quaker State Buick that you're looking at right now from Wick, Wick Wilson's car. They've had such a difficult problem getting past the halfway point. They've run competitively. They've qualified strong. The goal was, let's get halfway and then go racing. And again, I'll bring up Petty. He is only about three or four seconds behind. He does not appear to be losing any ground to the leaders. There is Davey Allison, who certainly we expect to hear from some more later this day also. Well, of course, the report early in the race was that Davey was suffering from some understeering problems. He certainly has not been as strong here today as he has been in some of the super speedway races. Oh, Rick Wilson and Morgan Shepard almost touching, going into turn number one. Rick had to take evasive action and dive to the inside of the racetrack, but has helped him, at least at the moment, he was able to pull ahead of Morgan, but here comes Shepard back now on the outside of the racetrack. The lead, meanwhile, is really hot and heavy. Look at Bill Elliott tucked right in on the back wing of Rusty Wallace's car and Dale Earnhardt is also right there. Now that's Harry Gant, the fourth car in line, but he again is a lap down. Boy, Bob, a beautiful racetrack. Michigan International must be a terrific place to race. You saw it in that example with Rick Wilson and Morgan Shepard. The banking is constant, the angle is flat as you go from the bottom of the racetrack to the top of the racetrack, and it's nice and wide. It's just a fantastic place to drive race cars. And this has been a very safe race to this point. Only one yellow flag. And Dale Earnhardt is dropping low on the racetrack. He's coming in for a pit stop. Now let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Now remember, he might have a clutch problem coming in and out of the pits. Jerry. Dale Earnhardt comes in very, very slowly. We'll watch the bring his car to a halt. It's a critical time here for the Wrangler Chevrolet. It will make a left side power change. And it's been 40 laps since they came in. A little bit early, but they wanted to make sure they got in pit road and out without a lot of traffic. is right here and here come the leaders off of corner number four is Earnhardt going to get up to speed before the leaders come around he's very slowly getting up to speed at corner number two the leaders meanwhile are at full song into turn number one now I believe that Dale is going to stay on the lead lap but he is certainly being hampered by that problem that he has with the clutch he really did an excellent job though Bob you, you never know what the the magnitude of the problem is until you tear the car down after the race and find out, oh, that was that part and this part. But Earnhardt is carrying a sluggish car out of the pits. There you see him running right in front of Jim Sauter. Did an excellent job, apparently, getting that car back up to speed as quickly as we can. Here's a pan back. Looking back to the leaders, you can see that Dale uh, is about uh, 10 seconds ahead of the leaders, all of whom have to pit yet. That's about three quarters of a lap now that Earnhardt is down to those running up front. Back with more of the champion Spark Plug 400. You rejoin us and Bill Elliott stops for his third pit stop of the day. The Ernie Elliott led crew going to work on that car, changing rubber on the left side. Fuel is being put into the Coors smelling Ford. 13 seconds have elapsed, 14. He stops the clock with a stop of 15.1 seconds. Rusty Wallace, meanwhile, is the leader. He's in turn three, and he should be coming in very soon for a pit stop. But he stays high on the banking this time and will make another circuit. Bob, the other interesting thing about Bill Elliott's pit stop, as he worked up to speed, Dale Earnhardt came around. Dale Earnhardt is about 30 or 40 car lengths, I would suggest about five seconds behind Bill Elliott. So Earnhardt lost about five seconds to Elliott in that exchange of pit stops. Remember Earnhardt with the crippled race car. Well, we know that Dale Earnhardt came in a little bit sooner than everybody else because of the possibility of him uh, experiencing clutch problems and being slow in and out of the pits. But perhaps is Elliott not getting as good a fuel mileage with that Ford? I'll tell you what, Bob. At this point now, with everybody coming in between lap 125 and 130, it does not make any difference. Everyone has to stop 
out at least one more time. Nobody is in a situation where they have to cut it short. All bets are basically off as far as fuel mileage. This stop plus one more. We understand that at Pocono International Raceway in the running of the Quaker State 500 for Indy cars, Mario Andretti has crashed and reportedly broken his shoulder. We'll have more as information becomes available. There is Rusty down the back stretch in the lead. Richard Petty, by the way, is running second right now as Barry Dotson and the Kodiak led crew wait on Rusty Wallace. He's still, however, staying out there. He went 49 laps the last time, and if he's getting the same mileage, he can still go five or six more laps before he has to come in. Yellow flag, I believe. Yes, the yellow flag is coming out. What a break for oh, Rusty boy. Wallace. And wow. Richard Petty, for that matter, yes. because we talked about how strong Richard has been running, and he also is going to benefit from this yellow flag situation because neither Richard nor Rusty Wallace have pitted. The yellow comes out on lap number 130. We'll check to find out exactly why the yellow has come out. It's not for anything apparent to us uh, here in the uh, broadcast booth. Depending on track positioning now, Wallace and Petty have a chance at pitting and coming back out in the lead, but they're being hunkered down quite severely now as they go around three and four. They're really being slowed down, so they are losing some time now. But what an advantage to make a pit stop under leisure conditions. Stand by for a lot of pit activity. Wallace, Petty, Waltrip, Gant, Bobby Hillen, Greg Sachs, others are in the pit. Here's Dick Bergeron. And it is indeed a wonderful break for Rusty Wallace and also for Richard Petty, but not for the Elliott team. These guys will now be able to pick up four tires, and you can count on that, get the car squared away, take their time under caution, and get out properly. Here's Richard Petty on the bottom of your screen getting left side tires. Rusty Wallace also getting left side tires. So far as these have been flawless pit stops. Here the Allison also hit. Oh, Richard Petty out first. Petty and Wallace in a drag race down the straightaway. Hey, it looks like that Richard may come out in the lead of this race. And by the way, Dale Earnhardt is in once again. He's getting fresh rubber on the right side of the Wrangler Chevrolet. There he is. Jerry Punch, are you down there? Yes, we are in the Earnhardt pit as Davey Allison moves by. Bill Elliott has had a four-tire change. We are now working on the left side tires for Dale Earnhardt's car. Almost everyone will take on four tires during this caucus flag. Now, can Earnhardt keep the car running? We hear him revving the engine very slowly. They almost got it. Well, now, now the car moves out and away. A little bit of hesitation by Earnhardt. The car nearly stalled again here on pit road. And he's once again very slowly getting up to speed, leaving pit road. Not nearly as fast back out onto the racetrack as the others are. The field, meanwhile, the majority of the field is over in turn number four, and several others are getting set to come in for a pit stop. There, however, are Richard Petty and Rusty Wallace, and we'll have to decide which one of those two is in the lead when we go back to green. For now, though, our second caution period of the afternoon at Michigan International Speedway. Irish Hills in Southern Michigan, you're watching the Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International Speedway, which is being brought to you by the Champion Spark Plug Company. The yellow remains out. And Richard Petty is going to be shown as the leader of the race now. Bill Elliott and Dale Earnhardt did not lose a lap during this latest exchange of uh, pit stops. There was uh, a green pit stop made by both Elliott and Earnhardt and a yellow flag stop made by Rusty Wallace and Richard Petty, but Bill and Dale remain on the lead lap. But Richard and Rusty come out on top, as we suggested could possibly happen depending upon track positioning. Well, let's think a little bit about past MIS performances among the drivers who are up front with 70 laps to go in this race. Rusty Wallace has only raced here seven times in a Winston Cup stock car. He's been here three or four other times in an ASA car. He has finished in the top five once. The last two races, he's had a sixth and a fifth. Richard Petty, on the other hand, has raced 36 times and has finished in the top five 19 times. Let's go to Dick Berger and Terry Labonte. Well, here's a surprise. Terry Labonte is out of his car in the garage area. Everything had been working so well for you until just now. What happened, Terry? 
Well, the car has started vibrating about 10 or 15 laps ago, and we weren't sure exactly what it was. We were just going to wait, change four tires on the next stop. And uh, what happened was the water pump, and uh, it finally broke off, and uh, all the parts came off and uh, lost oil pressure and messed the engine up. Okay, we've got a green flag on the speedway. Labonte is out for a while anyway. Terry, second in the Winston Cup point standings going into this race. The pit stop summary. Wallace in in first position, out in second. Bill Elliott dropped six spots. He came in in second, went out in sixth, and Dale Earnhardt really lost because he's all the way back to 11th. Richard Petty gained three positions, and Morgan Shepard also gained three spots. So I guess you would say that uh, Richard Petty really benefited by that caution period. By the way, it was for debris on the racetrack. The field lines up in their two abreast formation to receive the green flag and a restart of this 400 mile race and the green will come out on lap number 133. Always interesting to see whose changes, who knew, whose new tires make a difference, will there be some new front runners? Can Earnhardt come back up to the front? How strong is Morgan Shepard? How strong is Richard Petty? As Petty and Wallace, I think they bump just a little bit as the green flag flutters. Well, Richard is not getting a good start at all. The green is out, but Richard drops back rather significantly he's there in the middle of the pack with cars going by him on the outside and the inside and rusty wallace on the other hand gets a tremendous start he goes back into the lead and right behind him is daryl waltrip as daryl continues to try to struggle and get his lap back three abreast racing now richard is back up to full song and alongside bill elliott three abreast look at this tremendous Tim Richmond being heard from significantly for the first time today. Bobby Hillen Jr. there, as is Jim Sauter. Restarts at Michigan. One of the most dramatic sights in all of auto racing. Four abreast now. Waltrip does look a little better. I think Waltrip has got an opportunity. He goes go yes. to the inside of Rusty Wallace. Morgan Shepard is trying to follow suit through. And Morgan is battling for the lead. Morgan is on the lead lap, not a lap down. And at the moment, he has, or he had, about a wheel lead on Rusty Wallace. But now Rusty on the high side of the racetrack is once again in first with Morgan Shepard in second and Bill Elliott in third. Shepard right alongside Rusty Wallace. Look at Richard Petty dive to the inside of the racetrack. Petty just did not get that car going when the green flag dropped, but now he is moving. Trophy Dash Racing for the lead Look here at Dale. 136 left, gone. Earnhardt goes way down south, considers the grass, thinks better of it. And just that quickly, Dale Earnhardt, who was battling for the lead, is back to sixth, make it fifth. Bobby, uh, rather, Davey Allison has also come on here. Bobby Allison, you were right. He's in that picture, too, Bob. Everybody with full loads of fuel, everybody with fresh rubber, and the cars are enormously equal. What will happen over the next 30 laps will really give you a complexion of how to the end of this race will go. As the cars lighten up with loads of fuel, some of the drivers will abuse their tires just a little more than others. Some of the setups of the cars are more perfect than the others. The tires will last a little longer on those machines. But right now, everybody is on even footing, and it shows. Rusty Wallace, followed by Bill Elliott, Morgan Shepard, and Richard Petty here at Michigan. We'll be right back. Leading with Morgan Shepard second and Davey Allison to third. Here's a replay of the action in turn four. You can see Rusty is sideways right here. He tried to point the car down under Daryl Waltrip. He's trying to save it right now. You don't see it in your screen, but it's getting loose. And as he loses, loosens the car as it moves back and forth, it loses RPM, and Bill Elliott moves underneath him, followed by Morgan Shepard. And Daryl Waltrip has been passed, so he goes a lap down once again. But into the lead, we have Bill Elliott. That is the ninth lead change of the day.
make that the 11th lead change of the day, and we have had eight different leaders. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Well, an interested spectator today just showed up here in Tim Richmond's pits is Huey Lewis of Huey Lewis and the News. And Huey, welcome to Michigan, and uh, I guess you and Tim Richmond are pretty good buddies. That's right, yeah, we, we met a while ago, and uh, this is my first stock car race, quite exciting. Well, well you were nearby in uh, Charvoy, Michigan last night, and in Cincinnati tomorrow night for a show, but uh, I know Tim would have you to come to watch a race. What do you think about all this, these cars going 170 or 80 miles an hour? What are your impressions of stock car racing? I've seen it on television a lot, but I've never really been down here. And it's uh, it's something completely different down here. It's really exciting. Well, good to have you here. And he's cheering Tim Richmond on. Tim's back in the pack, battling his way to the front. And Huey will have to be battling his way to the airport very soon as he goes <laughs> to Cincinnati tomorrow night for an appearance. Well, we've always heard that Huey Lewis was one of our uh, regular watchers on our auto racing telecast. And we're glad to have him in person on our airline. Look at Davey Allison as he has moved back into third. Davey Allison is certainly not out of this race by any means. Rusty Wallace, meanwhile, has fallen back to fourth at the moment. But the battle for the lead involves Bill Elliott and Morgan Shepard. A fine performance by Morgan in the Kenny Bernstein on machine. Now here comes Davey. Down low, passing Morgan. Davey is second. Reviewing the winners of 1987. Of course, we've mentioned several times Earnhardt's eight wins. The man now in second, Davey Allison, is one of three who has two wins. Bill Elliott also has two wins. Tim Richmond has two. And four drivers have one win apiece. There is Buddy Baker and Bobby Allison side by side. Allison is one of the drivers with one win. Kyle Petty, Rusty Wallace, and Ricky Rudd. Tim Richmond also right in the thick of things in that race. And Dale Earnhardt leads this pack of cars. Everything is beginning to sift out. And it appears as though in this segment, as we're watching Earnhardt trying to carry his machine up to the front, that Morgan Shepard has a significantly strong car. Davey Allison is back up to the front, as is Elliott. But Allison, Davey, and Elliott have been the two most constant factors at the point. Earnhardt is sixth, Buddy Baker seventh, then Tim Richmond. The Miller American cars are fighting for position side by side. Bobby and Bobby, uh, Bobby Allison and Bobby Hillen Jr. Bobby Hillen Jr.'s best finish at MIS, a sixth in the June race. So Bobby Hillen Jr. knows how to steer a car around 200 laps here at MIS. And there's Bobby right in the center of your screen. Bobby Hillen Jr., that is, following Bobby Allison. And they are putting the heat on Alan Kowicki, one of our front row setters. 13 cars are on the lead lap. Those not mentioned recently on the lead lap, but they are, is Jeff Bodine in car number five, and in the Valvoline, Pontiac, Neil Bonnet, and Kyle Petty. There is Bill Parsons at car 55 involved in this tussle for position, but Bill Parsons is a lap down in the skull, number 55. at least acting like he's on the lead lap as he is racing right along with Bobby Allison. Bill's had a good season. That team going to primarily one machine has really held Bill in pretty good stead as he's had several top ten performances and has been a threat for the top five. You can see five top ten finishes. He's been a threat for the top five on at least half of those occasions. Bill Elliott, Davey Allison, Morgan Shepard, Rusty Wallace, Richard Petty, and Dale Earnhardt. Those are the first six. They are in a lead draft. Most of Bill Elliott's wins, it seems, have come at the Michigan International Speedway. He's done well here. By the way, Elliott has won 9% of the Winston Cup races he has entered in his career. Still, the leading winner of all time in terms of percentage is it's Richard Petty. He's won 19 percent of them. We're glad you could join us on this Sunday afternoon for live coverage of the Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International Speedway. It's in the lead draft: Elliott, Allison, Shepard, Rusty Wallace, Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt. 
as we have completed 149 laps. A car smoking in turn number one, high against the wall. It's Tim Richmond in car number 25. He stirred it up there, Bob, because the smoke started to come out as he went down the front stretch. He held it under control, and he steered it up there to get out of the way. Nice job of driving by Tim Richmond. He's down the back stretch. The car slowing, but Tim managed to keep it out of the wall nicely. However, Ken Reagan has spun in turn. Earnhardt pitting. This is his best shot. Earnhardt with that clutch problem has got to take advantage of these yellow flags. He comes in on lap 149. My guess is Dale Earnhardt is going to try and stretch this, make it lap 150 they just took. Earnhardt is going to attempt to go the distance no matter what. Alan Kowicki, Bobby Allison, Neil Bonnet, Benny Parsons, and other are also taking advantage of this yellow flag to pit. From what we've seen so far today, Earnhardt's only opportunity to win this race seems to be pitting under the yellow. As they come in on this point, if he's getting just perfect fuel mileage, they should be able to go the distance, and that has to be what's on their mind. Tim Richmond pulls behind the pit wall. Meanwhile, his teammate, Betty Parsons, in the decapitated Folger, sponsored number 35, is receiving work on the left side of his car. The jacks are down, and Benny Parsons is pushed back off. All the leaders coming in this time, and this could be interesting. Not every one of them has shown the ability to go 50 laps. Fact is, few of them have shown the ability to go 50 laps. How long will this yellow flag last? How much fuel will it conserve? We'll find out. Dick is there. Right, that is the key question. Who can go 50 laps? And right now, Bill Elliott is in. They're going to take four tires take as much fuel as they could possibly get into this, this car. Elliot on the bottom of your screen now taking left tires. Davey Allison also taking left side tires on his car. They're going to get every bit of fuel they can in. This is just at the edge of the winner. And there goes Elliot on the pit. Maybe he's beating them out. They scramble out of the pit road onto the racetrack, but Dale Earnhardt's car is still in. They have the hood up on it, and work being done on the right side of the engine compartment. Now the hood goes down. They try to buckle up that Chevy and get it underway once again. There he goes. But again, it's a slow takeoff for Dale Earnhardt. We've got 49 laps to go in this race. 49 and we're under yellow because of a spin by Ken Reagan in car number 77 in turn number two. We'll be back after this. It's the reason for our third caution of the day. Ken Reagan spun and brushed the wall in turn number two between turns one and two. Actually, Tim Richmond may have dumped some oil out there when his engine let go and Following was Ken Reagan, and he may have slid into the wall because of that. Let's go to Dick Bergman. Well, Bob, if anybody deserves the Courage Award here this afternoon, it surely is Ken Reagan. He's returning after a serious accident at Talladega in May in which he broke his leg. In fact, they put a steel pin the whole length of his thigh. Now, two years ago, at this exact same race, Ken Reagan returned from a serious broken neck suffered at Talladega. So he's really had his knocks, but he's out here and he's still trying. Meanwhile, down pit road, Jerry Punch has another story. Jerry? Well, a little bit of concern here in the Wrangler pits again. As you said, they were underneath the hood on the car during that pit stop. They were trying to see if they could make an adjustment on the clutch in the car. We mentioned it's been slipping all afternoon. Also, they added a little bit of wedge in the right front of the car, raised the right front up just a little bit to try to make some adjustments in the handling. The clutch is still the problem here in the Wrangler crew. They're discussing it on the radios with Dale Earnhardt. We'll have to wait and see if it'll hold out for the remaining 47 laps. All right, thank you, gentlemen, for your, pit, for your reports from uh, the pit area. Well, you know, you can do a lot of damage to an engine in many ways, but one of the ways you can damage it is by over-revving it. And uh, the crews and the mechanics have come up with a way to prevent over-revving an engine. It's explained in this quick pack. Quick packs are brought to you by New Quaker State with QSX. Keeps your engine cleaner to last longer. Many Winston Cup drivers have complained about over-revving their engines by missing a shift on a restart or leaving pit road. And what happens when they over-rev the engine? Well, they can snap off a valve or break a spring or even break a rod, explode the engine, and they're through for the day. Well, the Winston Cup engine builders have decided they can fix that by putting rev limiters on the cars. Let's show you what they're talking about. 
These small red boxes are rev limiters. They limit the amount of revolutions per minute that the engine will produce. They are hooked to the electronic ignition. They will sense through this ignition the number of RPMs the engine turns. You can implant a small chip in the back of the rev limiter to tell you how far you want the engine to go before it's limited. This chip here says 8,000 RPMs. Once you exceed 8,000, these limiters will cause an ignition short circuit, causing the engine to begin to sputter and miss. No longer will the engine run well, but it won't over rev, and therefore you won't break a rod or possibly break a spring or snap off a valve. And as the yellow stays out, Bobby Allison and Neil Bonnet pitted on lap 150, and everybody else pitted on lap 151. That means that Bobby is the leader of the race, Neil Bonnet is second, and Richard Petty is third. As the yellow stays out because of a spin and a brush with the wall in turn two by Ken Reagan. We'll be back in Michigan right after this. Uber, Jerry Punch and Dick Berggren back at Michigan International Speedway. Pit stops have been completed. We'll show you the summary of how things went during those stops. Elliott came in in first, came out in sixth. Davey Allison really made a nice jump, or rather a move backward from second to sixth. Morgan Shepard went from third to seventh. Wallace from fourth to fifth. Richard Petty gained two positions. He came into the pits in fifth, comes out in third. Bobby Allison was ninth and is now the leader of the race, and Neil Bonnet was 12th and now is running second. And again, it's because of that, uh, the fact that they pitted on lap 150 and everybody else came in on lap 151. Let's talk to Bobby Allison, hopefully. Bobby, this is Larry Newber up at ESPN's booth. Uh, did you guys plan that yellow flag in that pit stop, or were you just lucky to put yourselves in the lead? Well, Larry, we were just lucky. Uh we had just gone in for a uh, right, and uh, we, uh, we felt like, well, we had all four of the last caution. We felt like just right would do it, and uh, they got us back out in the lead. Bobby, what do you think your chances are now? You've watched the leaders for the last 15 or 20 green flag laps, seemingly unable to catch them. Do you think the fresh set of tires are going to keep you in the lead? Well, Larry, uh, the boards look awful strong here in the last... Uh, around uh, we're running good but uh, it's gonna be hard to uh, hold them off we really need those new Buick cylinder heads we're trying to get NASCAR to approve we understand the cool suit also went out on you is it unbearably hot in there well it's pretty hot in here Larry but uh, you know this is a cool hat by Thermacore it's worked really good but I think I've used up all, the, all of the Freon okay Bobby well good luck to you and we'll be keeping our eyes on you Rusty Wallace, this is Bob Jenkins. Uh, very quickly, we got one more lap to green, but uh, we noticed that you dropped out of the lead and back to fourth uh, there before the yellow came out. Is everything okay? Yeah, I hope everything's okay now, Larry. We had a set of tires that just didn't work real good. It was real loose. Now it's just happened to drive and hold on, but I think the boys have got it fixed right now, so we ought to be in good shape here on out. All right, we'll let you go back to work. Good luck. Let's go down to Jerry Punch, who has an explanation of what's going on with Dale Earnhardt. Well, Dale Earnhardt just made a pit stop, and they made a right front spring change. Now, you cannot change a spring under NASCAR rules unless the spring is broken. We'll take a look. The spring indeed was broken. This is the right front spring here on the Wrangler Chevrolet. You see where the spring just absolutely came apart or separated here. Cecil Gordon, who's the spring and chassis man here. Cecil, what happened to this spring? What's that dark spot there? Well, it looks like there has been a slight flaw in the spring all the time, and it just caught up with us today. We had really no way to check these springs, so uh, it just caught us today. Well, fortunately, they could come in under caution and get the spring changed. Let's go further up pit road to Dick Bergeron. Well, my Freon's doing just fine. In fact, I wish I could give some of it to Bobby Allison and help him through. Another guy that's good cool down here is Ernie Elliott. Ernie, you've pitted with about 50 laps to go. Have you got enough fuel to go all the way? Yeah, well, actually, there's 49 left to go, So, and we've, we've got enough to go the distance. Okay, they're comfortable. They, they think they're all set. We've still got some time before they go green as well, and that'll help the fuel economy, too. Yeah, Dick, my opinion is everybody is in okay shape. Uh, three cars have shown the ability to go, four cars to go 49 laps or more. Morgan Shepard, the uh, 27 car of Rusty Wallace, Bobby Allison, and Benny Parsons. But the yellow has lasted long enough that everybody coming in on lap 150 should be in good shape. And Harold Kinder had given the field a one more lap to go sign, but now the yellow remains out for at least one more lap. Keep. 
we have a very busy week coming up here on ESPN auto racing coverage. Thursday, we'll be at the Indianapolis Street in the Speed Room for USAC Midgets. Then Friday at 7.30 Eastern Time, qualifying for the Winston Cup race. At 8.30, we'll have live coverage of the Grand National race from Bristol. Now, on Saturday night at 7.30 Eastern Time, we'll have live coverage of the Bush 500 from NASCAR. The officials at Bristol International Raceway have asked us to tell you if you do not have a ticket for that Saturday night race, don't even bother coming because they have not only sold all the seats available, but they have sold all standing room. You just can't get into the place on Saturday if you don't have a ticket, so the best thing for you to do is stay at home and watch it live on ESPN. Now, seats do remain available for the Friday night Grand National Show. Now, the week after, or a couple of more weeks after that, the big race day America here on ESPN. Complete live coverage of several races. We'll begin it all at 8.20 in the morning on Sunday with the Formula One Italian Grand Prix from Monza. At 1 o'clock, we will have the Southern 500 from Darlington International Raceway. This is on Sunday, September the 6th. Then we will also have live coverage that same day of the Escort Radar Warning 200 from Mid-Ohio, the San Antonio GTP race, IMSA style, and we'll also have reports from the U.S. Nationals Big Bud Shootout drag racing. It's going to be a tremendous day of auto racing coverage here on ESPN Sunday, September the 6th. We'll hope you'll be with us. The main event, so to speak, that day will be the Southern 500, but we will certainly keep you updated on all the other big events in the world of auto racing. Going on that day, we'll have live cut-in reports. Jack Root going to be coordinating things from the studio, and I can't wait. I'll be in Darlington, and you'll be in Mid-Ohio, Larry. So the pace car stays out. They're sweeping some of the dust and debris off the racetrack in turn number two. That's why the yellow is staying out. So then he's got the uh, arm up on the side of the car, acting like he's just on a Sunday afternoon drive out there. The car, of course, is under caution because of an accident up in turn number two involving Ken Reagan. And we'd like to uh, thank the people at Kodak for providing the uh, in-car camera that we have had with Rick throughout the afternoon. Kodak BRG film, unsurpassed color and print film, the color of light. He's in uh, 20th position, by the way, Rick Wilson is, one lap down. We have 12 cars that are on the lead lap, and Bobby Allison and Neil Bonnet are running first and second at the moment. We haven't seen much of them today because they were back in the 11th, 12th, and 13th positions, but because they pitted a lap ahead of everybody else, that allows them to be first and second at this point. Richard Petty lying in third position. We'll see how things shake out when we get back to the green flag, and that will be occurring in just a few seconds as the pace car pulls into pit road, and the field is in turn number four, ready for a green, and we'll have green on lap number 160. 40 to go, and the green flag is displayed for a breast racing as Ricky Rudd is on the apron of the racetrack, passing the start-finish line. They go into turn number one, and Bobby Allison and Neil Bonnet are first and second, but here comes Richard Petty and Rusty Wallace. Here are the 12 cars that will shoot it out as we go inside of Rick Wilson's car in the final 40 laps. We mentioned the first two, Richard Petty, Alan Kowicki, Rusty Wallace, Davey Allison, Morgan Shepard, Bill Elliott, Buddy Baker, Kyle Petty, Jeff Bodine, and Dale Earnhardt. Those are the cars on the lead lap. Look at that scramble going into turn number three. Any of those drivers and cars can win this race. Richard Petty is already right behind the leader, Bobby Allison. Petty could very well win this race. There hasn't been a car stronger all afternoon than Richard Petty. And I think, Larry, you mentioned very early in the race that it appeared to you as if Richard was just biding his time and waiting for the opportunity. But there goes Neil Bonnet in the Valvoline number 75 car, battling alongside Richard Petty as they go down the back stretch. The two people everybody has to keep their eyes peeled on, I believe, are Davey Allison and Bill Elliott, however. Rusty Wallace makes a move on the inside. Bobby Dillon is also in this group of cars, but he is on, uh, not on the lead lap. Let's go to Nick. 
what Bonnet did to get into that position was a really neat deal. What he did was everybody else took four tires, he took only two. That let him get out of the pits faster than anybody else, but he's not going to be handling as well, so he may well slip to the back of the pack. Greg Sachs, very wobbly, coming off of turn number four. He saved it, though, in the number 50 car. Still four wide racing into first and second turns. Here's a replay. Watch Greg Sachs on the high side with Morgan Shepard. Right along the wall. He dances a little bit with Morgan Shepard. Morgan and Greg hustling to hold on to the machines. There is the light-painted Neil Bonnet right in front of the other Valvoline car. Now we're in Rick Wilson's car once again, and that's Dale Earnhardt right behind him, and also Buddy Baker. Earnhardt will look to the inside. Now decides to look on the outside. There is Petty taking the lead from Bobby Allison. Richard Petty leads. The crowd is going absolutely hysterical, thinking that this perhaps will be 201 for Richard. Rusty Wallace, though, is thinking, I can do this also. Rusty on the high side of Bobby Allison now will fall into second spot. Richard Petty's last win, Daytona Firecracker in front of the President on the 4th of July, 1984. to keep abreast of the action, but there is action all over the racetrack. The main concern, though, now is Richard Petty and his lead, but look at the battling back here. Davey Allison, Morgan Shepard, Bobby Hillen Jr. Side by side and three abreast. Hillen Jr. lost a lap earlier. We've got one car, possibly two, who are losing an engine going into turn number one. Somebody is running Kyle down Petty. Low. Kyle Petty smoking badly at the bottom of the racetrack. He may have had an engine failure. Bob Kyle Petty dropped out of the Daytona 500, the first race of the year. He has finished seven right. in a row since. You're absolutely right. He has the second best finishing performance of the year, next to Dale Earnhardt, who's finished all of them. But Kyle may not finish Yellow this race. Yellow flag, race back to the caution. Our fourth caution of the afternoon is coming out. The race to the check. The uh, caution flag is won by Petty. Davy Allison Rusty of pitting Wallace. and Jeff Bodine of pitting. There is Davy Allison bringing the Hamilton Ford in for service on the 166th lap. Joey Knuckles and crew go to work on the right side, changing the rubber. This the could be a significant break for Earnhardt. You know, Earnhardt had to go all the way to the back of the pack because he can't leave the pits quickly. He had moved up several cars but hadn't really caught the leaders. Now he is among them. Dale Earnhardt is a part of this again. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Davy Allison in for a four-tire change. They were not happy with the set of tires they put on the car, and now they a little bit of confusion. They're going to change. They change the right side tires. They start to move the car away, then they're going to change left side tires. Remember in Daytona earlier, they had the left side lugs loose, and Davy left. They lost a wheel on the racetrack, and it cost him a good finish. Now Davy Allison down the way in the Haviland Ford. Davy moves back out onto the racetrack. It appears as if nobody else will come in. Well, we have Buddy Baker and uh, Bill Parsons coming in for a stop. And so is Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott choosing to make another pit stop with 167 laps completed. So 33 more to go. And it appears as if they're going to change the tires on the right side of his machine. Boy, it's a real tough call, Bob. If there were like 10 laps only to go in the race, chances are most every one of the leaders would come in and put on fresh rubber because if they don't, they feel their chances for winning are absolutely nil. But with this much distance to go, it's a real difficult decision. Will Richard Petty win his 201st Winston Cup race? We'll answer that question a little bit later. Stay with us. It's being made. Bobby Allison brings the Miller American Buick to a stop on pit road. 
the field is still under caution because of a blown engine on Kyle Petty's car. And let's go to Nick Bergeron. Well, Bobby Allison is doing something virtually nobody else did, which is a four-tire change. Several of the competitors, however, faked pit stops. Rusty Wallace's crew is right out here on pit road with their signboard. So is Richard Petty's crew, as if to tell everybody, hey, guys, we're coming in. And then when the last possible moment came, they jumped over the other side of pit wall. And that is part of race day strategies now. Jerry, what's going on up at your end? Well, Davey Allison came in and got some tires. We might mention that Bill Elliott came back down and he got tires. On the last restart, Elliott was awfully slow, but I wanted to comment on the Bobby Allison pit stop. You may remember back in July, Bobby Allison was a lap down at Daytona with 10 or 15 laps to go. They kind of caution. He came in, he made his lap up, he came in. He was the only one of the leaders to pit. He came in and got four fresh tires, and we all know what happened. He passed seven or eight cars and won the Firecracker 400. So Allison remembers what happened a couple of months ago. Maybe it'll happen again today. Bob, everybody would like to run their own race and make their own decisions as to coming in or not for, for uh, tires at this point in the race, but what the leaders do has a lot to do. It's one of the factors in your decision, and with Rusty and Richard staying out there, it has forced at least three or four other cars to remain the same. Still cleaning up the oil on the racetrack from Kyle Petty, so we'll have a couple of more laps under caution here. In the meantime, we'll take another break. next time around and the resumption of the champion spark plug 400 the green will come out on lap 170 we'll have 30 to go the leader is Richard Petty Rusty Wallace is second third is Alan Kowicki fourth is Morgan Shepard in fifth is Dale Earnhardt sixth Neil Bonnet seventh Bill Elliott eighth is Jeff Bodine ninth is Buddy Baker tenth is Davey Allison and eleventh is Bobby Allison and here comes the field off of corner number four and we look forward to another restart here at Michigan they're always exciting we'll also pay attention to Bill Elliott he got off to a bad start last time we had a restart let's see if he does this time here's the green we're back at it and once again they spread out all over the racetrack into turn one Richard gets a good start this time and manages to keep his Pontiac in front with the Pontiac of Rusty Wallace chasing Rick Wilson with our in-car camera being passed by Dale Earnhardt and now Daryl Waltrip. There has been more attrition today at MIS than in most previous races. Could that still be a factor here in the final 30 laps? There are 11 cars on the lead lap and without stretching the point one iota, each one of those cars can win this race. Look at the close competition involving Dale Earnhardt and Bobby Allison. Each one of those cars can certainly win it, Bob, but I'll say again that the cars who have shown the most consistent strength are the two Fords of Elliott and Davey Allison, along with Rusty Wallace. Although Richard Petty has been the strongest car of the last 10 or 15 laps, and Petty and Wallace are pulling away. Look at this battle. But look at Dale Earnhardt. Oh, Dale sideways. Is he going to spin? Oh, unbelievable. He saved that car as pointed right for oh. the infield. I can't believe it. Staggering. Absolutely and utterly staggering. What an excellent job. Oh. Well, if there was ever any doubt about the driving ability of Dale Earnhardt, he just got proven otherwise right there. 150 miles an hour in a 20-degree bank corner. Earnhardt is completely out of shape. He saved it. With cars all around him, Alan Kowicki is right beside him. This is how it looked from our camera on top of the grandstand. Look at that. Oh. The car was literally pointed toward the infield, and Bobby Hillen did an excellent job of staying away from that car that was pointed in the wrong direction. Meanwhile, Petty and Wallace continue to motor away. Absolutely amazing. There is Buddy Baker going to the inside of Benny Parsons. Benny in the green Folgers car. Earnhardt, Waltrip, a lap down. Rick Wilson, a lap down. Bobby Hillen Jr., a lap down. Here is third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Kowicki, followed by Morgan Shepard. Kowicki is holding his own. He is on the lead lap. He is officially in third. There is fourth running Morgan Shepard. There you can see him on the left. That's Bobby Hillen Jr. in the Miller American number eight. Remember, Bobby is one lap down, but Morgan is trying to get by Bobby and go out to Jason on Alan Kowicki, who now lengthens the distance between him and Shepard. 
So it's Petty by about 10 car lengths, Wallace by about 10 car lengths over Kawicki in second, by about five car lengths over Shepard in fourth. Morgan Shepard is certainly not out of this race by any means. He had a good run last week until he spun with Terry Labonte. There is Richard Petty. And the interval he has over Rusty Wallace. And a crew member is drinking a Pepsi, but with crossed fingers. In fact, he's got both hands crossed and hoping that his driver, Richard Petty, can pull off his 201st Winston Cup victory here at Michigan. He leads at the moment. Richard Petty has won four times. We told you earlier here at MIS, the last two races have only been good enough for 18th and 12th. There is Earnhardt, still Meyer, among Rick Wilson and Darrell Waltrip. 25 laps to go, 25 to go. Remember that there was a broken spring on the Earnhardt car. They have changed it. And Dale is trying to fight his way back up to the front. Once again, Rick Wilson's car. And Earnhardt right ahead of him, down the back stretch. The progress report on the Fords of Elliott and Davy Allison. They are running about eighth and ninth in line on the track. They are not making a rocket ship move to the front, but it, they're inching that way. Are they running faster than Petty or Rusty Wallace? Still too early to tell. I think we're going to be seeing Bill Elliott appear on one side of uh, Rick Wilson. There is Bill Elliott, and he is approaching the Rick Wilson car. The car slowing in turn two. I think it's Bobby Hillen yes. Jr. You're right. Bobby Hillen Jr. slowing in turn number two. No incident. Everybody got around him safely, and there is Bill Elliott right now on the back end of that uh, Rick Wilson car. Buddy Baker is also hanging right in there, and that's Davey Allison also back there. With Benny Parsons. The last two races at MIS have been won by Dale Earnhardt. This year, and in late last year of this event, Bill Elliott. Davey Allison has been moving up steadily since he received four new tires during that most recent caution period. And there goes Davey to the outside and around Rick Wilson. It's too bad that Wilson and Bill Parsons each lost the lap when they pitted at a lap 130 caution. They just pitted too early. Up front, it is really tightening up. And you know somebody else, and it's a shame that he lost a lap, is Daryl Waldrop, just to the left of your screen there. Daryl has kept up with the leaders, but has never been able to get his lap back. He leads Earnhardt and Elliott, but remember that Darrell is on a lap down. Now Rusty Wallace is right up on the rear wing of that Petty McCock machine. And Rusty Wallace, rather Alan Kowicki and Morgan Shepard are not too far behind. Alan Kowicki has been one of the real bright surprises of the mid-season of 1987. There is Alan Kowicki. He almost had that win at Pocono. He's been qualifying strong. At the road course at Watkins Glen, he anticipated having engine problems. It came out and still ran like a scared rabbit. He got six. The first four cars right here together. Rusty Wallace slightly sideways in the fourth turn. Gathered it in, however. 179 laps completed. 21 to go in this one. Unless there's a big surprise in the field, Bob, I think it has come down to this four. Nobody else has broken from the pack. Earnhardt does not seem to be catching, although Elliott now has a clear racetrack in front of him for the first time, but these four right now look like they might be the ones. I don't know, Larry. I think Dale is beginning to close in on Morgan Shepard, and so is Bill Elliott. They are quickly catching the lead draft. They have gotten together, Bob. That was right. the secret. They're drafting partners, and that allows them to catch up to the lead draft. It would appear as if Rusty Wallace perhaps is not handling as well as he has earlier. We've noticed on a couple of occasions, especially in turn four, the car wants to get away from him. Turns one and two nicely, though, that time. Wallace about a car link behind Richard Petty. Then comes Alan Kowicki. Here is Bill Elliott putting a move on Dale Earnhardt and trying to take over fifth, but Earnhardt won't have anything. 
He pulls back around, Bill. This is the battle for fifth. And Buddy Baker is also joining the fight for this position. Elliott to the low side of the racetrack. He goes down there because he feels he can run quicker down there. Also, it gets him away from whatever turbulence is coming off of Earnhardt's car. Oftentimes in MIS, as you come to the trioval, you can go right down to the bottom of the racetrack where it's practically flat if the car is handling and pick up some ground. Earnhardt, Elliott, and Buddy Baker will soon be catching the first four cars, and there they are. No duo has emerged from those first four cars. There was a time in Winston Cup racing where you would see several people attempt to hook up and perhaps in duets and try and pull away from the other front runners. Now we see a little bit of harmony going on. Rusty Wallace seems to be working with Richard Petty, although Rusty drifts a little high, slows himself and Richard down, gives Kowicki and Shepard an opportunity to catch up. We have two groups of four. First, second, third, and fourth. Then a little bit of racetrack in fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. But I believe that's going to eventually become an eight-car draft for the lead. Look how close the first four are. Kowicki up high on the racetrack, and Shepard decides to follow up there. Richard Petty staying in the lead with Rusty Wallace in second. 183 laps complete, 17 to go. Seventh and eighth are Baker and Davey Allison. They are the two that right now, at least temporarily, are the furthest out of your picture screen. But nobody can pass Richard Petty, at least yet. Single file down the back stretch again. Earnhardt and Elliott are definitely closing the gap, but it is no rapid rise like we are accustomed to seeing from the two of them. Both Earnhardt and Elliott, normally when they win races, and boy, are they getting tight going through three and four. You can see them fanning out, each one of them looking for a specific groove, trying to play the odds, trying to play the drafting, trying to play the various lanes. And now Earnhardt and Elliott have caught them as a six-car draft for the lead. You can see Buddy Baker and Davey Allison coming on strong. Let's go to the pit area. Gentlemen, it's choice time. With 16 to go, Jerry Punch, who's going to win this you, race? I, I think Richard Petty is going to be the man to beat. I talked to Kenny Wilson earlier in the week and said, we've got something for him here at Michigan. We've been waiting all year for this opportunity. We're going to take it today. No one can take it from us. We're going to do our darndest. I think my guess is that Alex Kowicki is going to win. Why? I'd just like to see somebody win who hasn't won a race. But Richard Petty or any of these fellows who haven't won a lot of races, please me too. Larry? My sentimental choice is Morgan Shepard or Alan Kowicki because Morgan hasn't won this year. Alan has never won. I still stick with Elliott, however. I think that Dale Earnhardt is going to win. He's just moved up into third. That quickly, he has come from the middle of the pack to third. Elliott is right behind him, then Shepard, Kowicki, and Baker. On that last lap, while all of us were picking our favorites, so to speak, not favorite drivers, favorites to win this race, Alan Kowicki slipped high going through three and four. Morgan Shepard was the man right behind him. That is how Morgan and Alan dropped back. Now, Shepard appears to be running with Elliott and Earnhardt, but Kowicki has the one who has been dropped back to sixth place. And now we have uh, finally seen eight cars that are right nose to tail on the racetrack. There they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nose to tail going for it. And this is... What is so terrific, everybody, about this race is that oftentimes this happens with seven or eight laps to go, and not everybody has an opportunity to make whatever moves they have up their sleeves. But we still have about 14 laps to go. Everybody has got a clean shot. Anybody in that group of eight that's got anything left has got an opportunity here. They've got time to maneuver. All right, Larry, when we were talking to the drivers before uh, the race started earlier this weekend, we heard several of them say, since this is a drafting racetrack, the place you want to be going down the backstretch is in second. Is that what Rusty Wallace is doing right now? Very good question. Wallace appears to be a little loose. There is a good possibility that he does not want to attempt to make a move and make a mistake and drop back to fourth or fifth. I think there is a good possibility that Wallace is waiting. One interesting move that Morgan Shepard made early in the race, remember that he came across the start-finish line on one lap in third place, followed those two cars around, came off the fourth turn and passed two cars, 
coming off the fourth turn. But yeah, now that I think about it, I think that Wallace could possibly be in a waiting posture. Good battle for third, Elliott and Earnhardt and Shepherd. Morgan Shepard. Another thing, Larry, you start a car tight and you want it to loosen up as the race goes along. Is that perhaps what Rusty Wallace has done? Yeah, uh, I mean, they're all trying to do that. Wallace's crew appears to trouble yeah, right here in the front stretch. Jim Sauter and Jeff Bodine tangle. No both, hard contact. Both spin to the grass. Sauter out of control. Jeff Bodine continues. And the caution flag is out. Now it's going to be a race back to the caution. When they cross the stripe, we'll have 11 laps to go. No leaders are side by side right now. Let's keep our eyes Let's on see. Earnhardt. He's often very Look crafty. At Rusty. Look at Rusty. Rusty on the high side. He wants to win the race back to the checkered. Here comes Dale Earnhardt. Petty's Petty Petty. goes into the pits. The race to the yellow flag will be run by Rusty Wallace, then Earnhardt, Shepard, Bill Elliott, Alan Kowicki, and Buddy Baker. Well, Petty must be going back in for new tires. Must be also a big surprise to everybody. It wasn't that Rusty was running so quick, it's that Richard slowed down and Dick is down into Richard's pit area. Well, Richard Petty is in the pit area, the only one of the leaders to do it so far. He's got right side tires, he's taking a drink. This is going to be a four tire change with only 11 laps to go. And he obviously going to make a real stand on the gas charge to try to win this thing. It's been over two years since he's won. Here's his best shot. He's got four brand new tires, and there he goes. Petty moves back out onto the racetrack. So does Davey Allison, who came in for a stop that time. Michael Waltrip also did. You're watching Davey, though, get back up to speed on the racetrack, falling in behind the pace car. So did Neil Bonnet make a pit stop, and Bonnet has not been among the leaders, but he's remained on the lead lap. Petty and Dale Inman must be thinking the same way you were, Bob. Hey, Wallace is waiting on us. We would rather be the ones behind in second or third. We'll make the charge for the finish line. Several others making pit stops. You Buddy can Baker's see there to the there. right, including uh, Daryl Waltrip and Lake Speed and Buddy Baker. But Wallace leads Earnhardt, Morgan Shepard, Bill uh -oh. Elliott, and Bobby, Alan Bobby Allison. Remember Daytona? Remember what Dr. Punch was telling us about that race yep. in Daytona? Yep. Bobby Allison in a similar position. We watch the work on Bobby Allison's car. Tire change completed on the right side. Now they move around to the driver's side of the car and put on fresh rubber. The car has already been filled with fuel. Bobby Allison has his work completed and he's back on the racetrack. Now Jim Sauter and Jeff Bodine who uh, spun right in front of the main grandstand here are okay and both will resume in the race as Sauter's work has been completed and now Jeff Bodine goes back out onto the racetrack. You know, Bob, let me digress for just a second. The two of them spun through the tri-oval similar to the 200 mile an hour spins that we have seen through the tri-ovals at Talladega and Daytona. Nobody got off the ground. Let's try to talk to Rusty Wallace. He's leading the race, but he's going to have his hands full as he's going to stave off Earnhardt and numerous others. Let's see how uh, Rusty is thinking at this point. Rusty, this is Larry Newber. Any thoughts about coming in for fresh rubber here in the final 10 laps? Uh, not really, Larry. The, the guys behind me aren't coming in. It'd probably be pretty hard for me to catch them if I did. Was Petty and Neil Bonnet's duck into the pits? Were those big surprises? Ten rolls. It's going to be tough. Got the main man on my bumper. Yeah, you really do, Rusty. Uh, you've had a chance to run with him. Can you tell? Do you have a feeling? Are you stronger than he is? I don't know yet, Larry. Uh, Richard Petty was holding me up pretty good. I don't know. He was, Richard's running really strong off the corner, but was really slow in the center of the corner. So go ahead and run my pace. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, Rusty. The car appeared to be a little loose from up here. Was that because you were trying to race with Petty? The car does feel solid, though? I didn't hear the question. Did you say that the car appeared to be loose? Yes. Well, okay, Rusty, back to race. <laughs> and they go when you get 
Yeah, they, he's, he's conducting a conversation now with the pit crew, and that's certainly more important than our conversation with him. As Sam Posey once said, it was very well put. I wouldn't want to talk to me now either, so <laughs> that was right. well put, Sam. Richard Petty, meanwhile, has dropped back to sixth because of that pit stop. And we're going to be going uh, for live action at the Seniors PGA Golf Tour, the Seniors Gold Rush, next from California. That'll be right after the conclusion of this race here on ESPN. So stay with us for that. We're going to be going green here on lap 192. We'll have eight to go before we decide who is going to win this champion spark plug 400. Again, the situation is Rusty Wallace has the lead. Dale Earnhardt is second, Morgan Shepard third, then Bill Elliott, Alan Kowicki, Richard Petty, Neil Bonnet, Davey Allison, Bobby Allison, Buddy Baker, and Jeff Bodine. Those are the 11 cars that are on the lead lap in that order. And Bob, all these yellow flags here in the last 50 laps of the race have really played into Richard Petty's hands. And we mentioned earlier that Richard needed to pace himself in the early stages of this race. He is not one of those 30-year-old bucks running out there like Rusty Wallace is. Richard has had a lot of injuries. There has been some illness in the last four or five years, and they take their toll on a 50-year-old man. But these yellow flags have put everything on an equation, and Richard Petty easily has as good a chance as anybody among those top 11 still in the lead lap. Well, we hope you have yourself a couple of things to drink and some popcorn, because in the next eight laps, we're going to decide who wins this race. Settle back and enjoy it with us. Here we go. Harold Kinder waves the green flag. We're off and rolling once again. Rick Wilson, a lap car, pulls ahead of Rusty Wallace going into turn number one. And Rusty, once again, gets a pretty good jump on the field. Dale Earnhardt got a very slow start again. And you can see Morgan Shepard jockeying back and forth, looking for a place to go. But Dale held his straight line. He kept the lap car to the inside, and Morgan just couldn't get by. Rusty is glad, though, however, as Richard Petty continues to move up. He's passed Alan Kowicki already. Rusty is very happy that Rick Wilson is, at the moment, positioned between himself and Dale Earnhardt. The average speed of the race is 139.72 miles an hour, with seven more laps to go. Petty has shown some strength. Elliott is still in the thick of it. Davey Allison really hasn't emerged. He is still running 6th, 7th, 8th, somewhere in that group, but he hasn't popped out of it like Bill Elliott has. Elliott, for that matter, hasn't popped out strongly. Earnhardt is really the only guy who's been making a lot of passes the last 15 laps who has moved up toward the front. Richard Petty is fifth in the STP Pontiac. It's going to be a classic duel to the very bitter end in a Winston Cup race. We're at Michigan International Speedway, and we have completed 194 laps. Do not underestimate the presence of Dale Earnhardt up at the front. You heard Rusty Wallace say, hey, I got the main man on my back bumper. Yeah, they're all running their own race. Yeah, there are 11 of them up near the front, but everybody is very aware of where Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace in the wall. Rusty Wallace has but touched the wall. It. He saved it, but he loses the lead. Here comes Elliot. Here comes Earnhardt. Morgan Shepard gets by. Others are also passing Rusty Wallace to the inside, and it looks as if Rusty's bid for two straight Winston Cup races goes by the wayside. Richard Petty is working the low side of the racetrack. It's three abreast through quarter number four. He's trading paint with Bobby Hood Jr. Davey Allison is outside. Five laps to go. Earnhardt now has a lead with Elliott and Morgan Shepard, second and third. I looked closely at Rusty Wallace's right or outside that time. There was no visible damage. Rusty just got up into the loose stuff, up near the wall. Oh, see the white car on the left-hand side of your screen? He's just kicking up dust, cement dust, enough to slow him down, but he did not make contact with the outside wall. Nice job of saving the car by Rusty Wallace, but again, I think his chances of two in a row are over. Davey Allison working the high side of the racetrack in turn four, and he may have scraped the wall coming down. Earnhardt continues to lead. Just some unbelievable racing with four laps to go. The classic duel. Dale Earnhardt, Bill Elliott, the classic duel of 1987. 
the big question is, is Dale Earnhardt exactly where he wants to be, leading at Michigan, or is Bill Elliott exactly where he wants to be, second place at Michigan? He doesn't care who he's behind. Or is Morgan Shepard positioned himself? Remember that two-car pass earlier in the race? Shepard right now appears to be too far behind, but Elliott appears to be in the right place. At the very opening of our show this afternoon, we emphasize that Earnhardt and Elliott, look at Dale Earnhardt, he's way down on the apron of the racetrack, trying to prevent Bill Elliott from winning. We talked about these two guys at the very open of our show and speculated on how they could be battling for the lead as they came down for the checkered flag, and that indeed appears to be the situation. There are less than three laps to go. Bill Elliott is right behind Dale Earnhardt. And again, when we talked to the drivers before the race started, they said, yeah, I'd like to be in second place on the backstretch, coming around for the checkered flag. Elliott moves to the high side, though, of Earnhardt. The question is, Bob, is Earnhardt letting Elliott go there? Dale, once again, moving very low on the racetrack. He puts all four wheels below the white line. And in doing so, loses the lead to Elliott. But you're right, Larry, that could have been a ploy by Dale. He wants to be second. 198 down, two to go. Can Elliott parlay this lead that seemingly Dale Earnhardt has given him into two or three car lengths? Elliott goes way down on the bottom of the backstretch. Morgan Shepard does not appear to have enough oomph to get up there. Let's see what happens this time on the white flag lap. Two very unusual lines by Dale Earnhardt. There isn't a fan at Michigan International Speedway that is not on its feet, cheering, waving their hats, saying, yeah, let's see what happens. The white flag is out. One more left to go. Here comes Morgan Shepard on the outside of Dale Earnhardt. But Dale holds on to that second position. Meanwhile, Bill Elliott has begun to stretch out the lead just a little bit. And Dale Earnhardt is not going to be in a position going down the back stretch and going into turn number three to slingshot into the lead. The race is going to be for second. Shepard's going to try and move underneath. Richard Petty is spinning down the back stretch and making contact with the inside wall. Petty crashes on the very last lap. Harold Tinder has the checkered flag Watch in Shepherd. hand. Watch Shepard. Watch Shepard. It's going to be a battle for second. Bill Elliott is going to win. Dale Earnhardt is going to finish second. Morgan Shepard is third. And Rusty Wallace fourth. Bill Elliott has done it. He has won his third consecutive Champion Spark Plug 400 here at Michigan. and crew celebrate Bill Elliott's win here. And there is Richard Petty's car moving again. And what a heroic performance Richard Petty put on here at Michigan today. Bob, I'd like to make one comment. We are about three quarters of a mile from the backstretch, but so much was written and said about the, the battle between Bill and Dale, the early part of the season, all the heated words. Dale pulled up alongside on the inside of Bill Obviously, for three quarters of a mile, I couldn't see the exchange going on, but it looked very friendly, and it looked like Dale Earnhardt was probably congratulating Bill Elliott in a race well run. We're not going to be able to get a shot of it, but there is red paint all over the right front of the Dale Earnhardt car, showing you how tough the competition was in the final couple of laps for the Champion Spark Plug 400. Bill Elliott has won a tremendously exciting race He's pulling into victory lane right now, and we'll be there with him right after we pause for these messages. Coverage of the Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International Speedway, which has been brought to you by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. No matter how far you go, Goodyear takes you home. By the Quaker State Motor Oil Company. New Quaker State with QSX keeps your engine cleaner to last longer. By Dickies, they're America's favorite work clothes, but who says you have to work in them? And in part by Mr. Goodrich. No one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodrich. No one. Still a tremendous amount of cheering from the grandstand. Bill Elliott has won. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. 
Well, Bill, Bill climbing out of the course for it. Bill, all I can say is that was wild those last few laps. I'll tell you what, I've seen a lot of races, but that beats all I've ever seen. You know, uh, the race started back there with a bunch of laps to go with 35, and the car loaded up real bad, and it went right to the back. I thought, oh, my God, I've had it. So we came into pits. The, the next caution, we put a couple of tires on it. We started gaining a little bit of ground. And then everybody kept messing up. And I followed Earnhardt there through a bunch of stuff. I know a couple of cars went high a time or two, and we followed them and got by them. And it, <laughs> then Rusty went high over there, nearly hit the wall. And then Dale, or, uh, Dale got a little low down here and got a little loose, and I got above him and just got a good run and go and got around him. It beat up <laughs> ever seen for a race. Those last few laps when Earnhardt went awfully low out of turn four, I mean, you were following him. Do you think he was just simply trying to break the draft on you? Well, I really didn't know what I was, what he was trying to do. I was better than he was getting in turn three, and that's where I was able to get on in above him and then keep enough momentum to get about around him. And then he was too much worried about Morgan to ever try to get me a run. I was handling through the corners extremely well, but the car was just a little bit lazy up off the turns, but it still run good. I think I was just trying to bind the car up to some extent. Well, it looks like you got around him on the outside. Once you got around him, you pulled away. You feel like you've sort of justified a little bit. You're a little bit even now. You, you guys battling on the super speedways. Well, I tell you what, it feels good to win here at Michigan again. You know, we struggled last race and had problems, and we've had it been off and on all year long. And, you know, everything's went so well here the last couple of races. We had a little trouble back at Watkins Glen on Monday, but. Man, I can't say enough about the guys worked hard in the pits and, you know, thank Coors and Harry Melling for helping me out and special thanks to Ford for giving me something to drive. Well, again, congratulations to Bill Elliott. The car, he won the Bush Clash in early in the year. He wins at Michigan. His sixth win at Michigan, third consecutive champion spark plug victory. Gentlemen. Way to go, Bill. And our winner's circle interview has been brought to you by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. No matter how far you go, Goodyear takes you home. Well, we'll be back with some thoughts about this unbelievable race here in Michigan today, right after this. Here's in the champion spark plug 400. Bill Elliott wins, followed by Dale Earnhardt, Morgan Shepard, Rusty Wallace, and Davey Allison. Finishing sixth was Alan Kowicki. Seventh was Bobby Allison. Buddy Baker was eighth. Neil Bonnet ninth, and Jeff Bodine was in tenth position. Our thanks to the Hardy system for, for providing in-car camera. Hardys, we're out to win you over. And of course, also the uh, Kodak people for their in-car coverage. And our congratulations to Bill Elliott, who won one of the most tremendous races we've seen here on ESPN. Next week, Friday night, Winston Cup qualifying in the Bush Grand National Race, and then the Winston Cup race on Saturday night from Bristol International Raceway. Tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, the Chicago Bears versus the Miami Dolphins here on ESPN. My thanks to Larry Newbert, Dick Bergman, and Jerry Punch. For now, this is Bob Jenkins. So long, everyone.